slash art auction. And then when you see the piece that you want, just call 1-844-KVIE-ART. And we'll have volunteers here throughout the weekend who will help you bid. If you're the highest bidder, then it's yours. The phone lines are open and let's get this auction started. Coming up next is the award winners category, featuring the best of this year's auction, carefully selected by the jurors and curator. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Thank you for watching this break. It's our award winners break. And the portion of this art auction is sponsored by Crow and Decker. And we'd like to thank them for their commitment to supporting the arts on PBS KVIE. Now, over the last week, you've had the chance to vote on your favorite piece in the auction. And the votes, they're in. The winner of the 2021 People's Choice Award goes to item 32A, Sunrise, Sand Harbor State Park, Nevada, by Lewis Kemper. You can see it right there on your screen, and you can bid on that People's Choice Award winning pho photograph on Sunday afternoon at 12.30 p.m. during the Viewpoint Photographic Art Center break. Congratulations to Lewis, and thank you to all of you who participated in the vote. And now, moving on, here's an overview of the art that will be up for bid during the next half hour of award winners. Item number 1A is This Is Not My Beautiful House by Dean Chance. It's mixed, me it's mixed media, measuring 24 by 24, retail value of $500, and it's a curator award for contemporary. Item 1B, it's the best of show. This is Reach for the Heights by Susan Ballinger. It's acrylic on board, measuring 20 by 20, retail value of $450. Again, this is the best of show for this 2021 art auction. Item 1C is Tulip Arrangement by Anna Barber. It's a photograph measuring 20 by 30, printed on metal, and its retail value is $400, and it won a juror award for still life. Item 1D is Fern Medley by Ingrid Lockhart, and it's a photograph measuring 16 by 20, framed by the artist. Retail value is $500, and it won a juror award in the photo photograph uh, collection there. Item 1E is Walking Soulful Paws by Judy Lou Luce. It's a watercolor measuring 24 by 18, framed by the artist, retail value of $1,600, and it won a juror award in the figurative category. And the last item in this break is item 1F. It's Cliffs in Color by Lenora Morris. It's acrylic on canvas measuring 16 by 20, framed by the artist. Retail value of $350, and it won first place in landscape. Now, these are the pieces up for bid this break. Phone lines, they're open. The volunteers, they're standing by. Let's see the art. Hi there, I'm Rob Stewart, and thank you for joining us for the award winners category. It's great to be here. During the break, I'm pleased to be here with Jill Estroff, PBS KVIE's art curator. Jill has participated in the auction as a contributing artist since 2015, and now as curator has put together the amazing collection for you and we have a beautiful collection this year jill it is so good to see you nice to see you thanks for having me and i'm really glad to have invited so many new artists this year i want to thank those who are new to the auction and and of course returning favorites too but and there's a lot be <laughs> of beauty coming up this weekend right. new artist as you said so that's coming up soon. Okay, I would like to also say that I have something new in my house, and it is a Jill Estroff, and I get to wake up to that every day. It's a piece, Lily. I wake up to the piece that you created. So well, thank I'm you so that. thrilled that you chose to add my art to the collection. Yes. And I also have work by this artist in my collection. This is Dean Chance. And let me read you real quick about this one. It's called This Is Not My Beautiful House. And as you said, it's Dean Chance, mixed media, 24 by 24, and the retail value is $500 and a curator award for contemporary art. Yes, and I chose this because in part, it's deceptively simple composition uh, just kind of really calls out to you. The bright orange, the drips of paint, and the subject matter are all really compelling. And it's such a strong piece. Even in a large room, it would read very well from a distance. I think it would be gorgeous in a large 
a very decorated, like interior designed room because it's just so funky and modern. It also could be, um, well, you say contemporary. It won your contemporary award. Exactly. And um, also, it's interesting how Dean got his start. He would experiment with doodles mm. and then blow them up larger. And what I love about this piece is that there's just enough information to see what it is. It's not, I love this unfinished area, but you know from the title, this is not my beautiful house. It's a nod to talking heads. Uh, once in a lifetime, and one of the other lines is about a large automobile. Fine. So it's a really American painting in that sense. I love that. The By the way, you see the number on the screen right now. Let's get the bids rolling in. Uh, this is uh, a hot piece. It's a hot item, and you see the current bid is on the screen right now, but the retail for this is $500. Again, this is a curator award for contemporary. Get in on the auction. If you see something you like, you got to call quick because they move fast. So what a great way to start this off. I'm glad you started the entire auction with this piece. It's made of some funky material. It, it really is. He doesn't like to use, Dean does not like to use typical art materials. He likes to use house paint, spackle. And I love this description where he says he likes to sort of mix it up so that it resembles melted ice cream. Oh. And that way you get a thickness and a texture. And he loves using uh, chalk furniture paint. And also sometimes when he's feeling brave, he will use the stinky uh, enamel paint. Not on this one. And he said it's dangerous, highly flammable, and, you know, he has to paint outside. Yeah, sounds like he has <laughs> a lot of fun um, when he paints. I can promise you there is zero odor to this, but it does shine beautifully, as you can see. Uh, there on your screen or your device, however you're watching this. Such a fun piece to start the auction. Pick up the phone and call the number on your screen to get involved in the auction or any piece in this half hour. The website is right there, the address to follow along and see all the art that we have coming up this weekend. But each half hour, you need to see what's coming up so that you know when it's here, it goes very fast. Okay, we're gonna move on. This piece is gonna stay open and let's move to the next piece, Jill. We're moving on to another beautiful piece with lots of color. This is 1B. It is Reach for the Heights by Susan Ballinger. This is acrylic on board, spectacular color, measuring 20 by 20. Retail value is $450. And this is so exciting to say, this is your best of show 2021. Isn't that awesome? So much color popping right through. Uh, the screen there, and this is your best of show. Take it away, Jill. And you may also recognize it. It was featured on Inside Publications, a September cover for the East Sacramento edition, which is always exciting. I know as an artist, I've always been thrilled to be on the cover. Um, the juror, Miles Herman, our landscape juror, really loved this, and the way he opened his comments was, who's afraid of big pigment? not Miss Ballinger. Wow, and that's a huge compliment coming from Miles as well. Miles is a great artist. I love that compliment. And this is such a beautiful piece of art. I see why it won. And the colors are just exquisite. Pick up the phone, call the number on the screen to get involved in the art auction. The retail value is 450. This is your best of show piece for 2021. And you can also follow along online as well. Remember all the money goes to support PBS KVIE. So tell us about the, the mood of this piece. Well, what I really love are the trees. They're so voluminous. They're almost like clouds, but they're trees. And they, they really exemplify her neighborhood, Citrus Heights. It's reach for the heights. And I think it really achieves that. And what Miles particularly loved was the unconventional use of more than three-fourths of the space uh, is given to the trees with just a sliver on the bottom showing the structure. So it's very unconventional. And also her approach with watercolor in the past sort of informs how she's using her acrylic paint here, building up these beautiful layers of color, almost in a transparent way. It's spectacular. You know what else is fantastic? This is Susan's first year in the auction, and she won Best of Show right out of the gate. 
Yes, you just I've, never know. I've been encouraging her for years as I have many artists, and I think now she's happy that she listened to me. So listen, <laughs> listen to Jill when she says, get involved. She knows what she's talking about. Um, what else do you feel about this piece? Because as I look at you, I see you smiling from ear to ear. Yes, I just, again, the vibrant color and her use of how the sky is just sort of peeking through. And she's always understood light and shadow and figure and other ways, but just hear how the uh, how the light is hitting the roof and the shadow. You know which direction the light is coming from. As an artist, that's something I struggle with, but she masters it so well. Oh, how interesting. I didn't know that's what I was feeling until you said it. You know where the light's coming from. There's a lot packed into this beautiful piece. It's It's 20 by 20. And it is bold and beautiful and filled with light and color. Pick up the phone, call the number on the screen, and get involved in the auction. There you have your best of show 2021 right there on the screen. We're going to move on to the next piece. And again, congratulations to Susan for her award. Hey, here's another award winner, 1C. This is Tulip Arrangement by Anna Barber. This is photography measuring 20 by 30. This is printed on metal, retail value $400, and the juror award for still life. Beautiful piece by Anna Barba. Tell us about this beautiful piece. I, I, I love the printed on metal because it just shimmers. Yes, it really gives so much depth to it. And our juror, uh, Cecily Hastings, the publisher of Inside, she loved her technique using these exquisite colors and the strong composition as she thinks that the shadowy white flowers in the background are ethereal and quite gorgeous but what was interesting to me reading a little bit about Anna is that she considers herself a painter an artist, watercolor and oils, but because of space constraints, she's turned to digital photography. Oh. But you can see how she's using everything she learned in her art training to turn this photograph into something much more than a photograph. It's, she calls it photo fusion. Oh, I like that. And, and that actually makes a lot of sense when you look at it. The fusion aspect of it really really worked. And as I look inside of this, you see other flowers, it looks like buried in there as well. And it looks 3D. It looks three-dimensional just because I think of the printing. Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen. The retail value, $400 for this piece. This again is a juror's award for the still life category. And whenever we have more than one person bidding on a piece, we have a live auction. So pick up the phone, dial the number on your screen, and do not wait long because the pieces move very fast. Uh, we wanna sell, and I'm sure we will, every single piece in the auction. We want to tell us some more additional thoughts yes, about this piece well, that are just on the B burning desire for you. Well, it's so beautiful. And, and it also won an award at the Almond Blossom Festival. And so it's, it's worthy of awards in more than, yeah. than one category. And I think as you look at it and you can see the depth and it's just it gives you a lot to think about. It is a real treat to be with the curator uh, as we bring you these pieces into your home or your device, wherever you're watching us. Um, and I'd also like to recommend telling your, your friends all across the country and the world because the art is available for everyone. Uh, call the number on your screen, get involved in bidding. All the money goes to PBS KVIE, and we are grateful for all that you do for helping us bring the mission to you. And that's what the Art Auction does. Final thoughts before we move on. This is a gorgeous piece, and I, I will say it's a favorite of staff members who were a little sad when it won an award because they knew it would make it even more competitive, but it is a gorgeous piece, and it deserves your bid, and I hope someone lucky can take it home. Yeah, I see a lot of staff members um, in the background <laughs> jumping around all excited. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you. We've got a lot more to come, but we're halfway through the break, which means that we're going to keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. Three pieces of art in break one, and now the bids on these items. 
item number 1A is this is not my beautiful house with a little bit of homage to the talking heads. Retail value of $500, so close to a bell ringer. A bell ringer is when we hit that artist stated value and even go higher. So right now the current bid's 450. You can make it a bell ringer if you call right now. Item number 1B, guess what? Bell ringer. This is our best in show. And Reach for the Heights by Susan Ballinger has a current bid of $1,000. You can see Kenny the Owl right there. And you know what? Susan is in our phone bank right now answering calls. I don't know if we're able to pick her up on that. I don't think we are, but she's here. And congratulations, Sue. That's fantastic. And again, value of $1,000. And then the last item, of course, in this is item 1C, Tulip Arrangement by Anna Barber. And you can see that this is almost a bell ringer as well. $350 value, and it's printed on metal, and it looks so good. You can be the active bidder. right? It's actually at 400 right now. It's a bell ringer. It's going to happen right now. All right, we're gonna head back to the art and the rest of the art in this break. All right, we're back for the second half of our award winners break. Up next, we're looking at item 1D, which is Fern Medley by Ingrid Lockhart. This is photography measuring 16 by 20 and has a retail of $500. Uh, Jill, delightful piece. Yes, when this came in, I couldn't believe how playful it was. And that appealed to our juror. Also, uh, our photography juror, Donald Satterley, said that he enjoyed the graphic and playful components in it. Is this really one photograph or is it multiple? Like you said on the other one, fusion. No, I believe it is one photograph. Uh, the tips of the ferns do sort of look like brush strokes and that type of thing. And mm -hmm. the depth that you get here is really enhanced by the fact that it's printed on canvas. I love that because you don't have to put glass between you and the artwork. Mm, I and love so that too. So I think that that gives it an intimacy uh, that you can really tap into. Not that this really matters, but you also could hang this um, horizontal if you wanted oh. to. I mean, you could if you needed to, if you're trying to figure out yeah. in your space. Uh, again, this is a beautiful piece. This is Fern Medley by Ingrid Lockhart. Uh, photography measuring 16 by 20. Pick up the phone, call the number on the screen, and get involved in the auction. This has a retail of $500. This is the Juror's Award for Photography. Beautiful piece. And I think the different colors of green help add to the depth. You'll see the ones in the foreground have so much more yellow and light in them, and that really creates the dimension uh, that makes it a really a winning piece that could go anywhere in your home and sort of bring nature inside. I love how this um, the fern really like looks alive in this in this photograph here and in this art and every piece moved through your hands and frankly your heart. Yeah, so why like this these, one? These little tendrils uh, are curling in such a way that really it does have a playful quality mm -hmm. to it. Yeah, and it's I think real. That's, I think that's what really stays with you. So this one evokes what type of emotion for you? Just uh, the joy in nature and being outside, which we've all turned to so much during this time. And I just think it's a way of making sure that it's in your home. Yeah, we've had a lot of time where we need to bring the outdoors in um, during the pandemic. And I think this has been a beautiful way to keep the beautiful uh, spring and summer alive year round in your home. It's also, in my opinion, the best gift you can give someone is art. And this artist gave this to PBS KVIE so that we could then pass it along to you, to the lucky winner, to the lucky bidder who gets to take this home. You have to pick up the phone though to be involved in the auction. Call the number on the screen. Again, this is 1D Fern Medley. It is beautiful by Ingrid Lockhart. Photography measuring 16 by 20. Artist frame retails for $500. Spectacular piece. It's ready to go right here to right there. And I'm talking directly to you. Jill, final thoughts. Well, it's a fern that you don't have to water. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's good. You know, uh, we're also conserving water. Right. That's <laughs> KVIE. And they With are notoriously heart. tricky to keep alive, too. Yes, so they this are. this is one you don't have to worry about. Okay, we're going to keep this one open, and we're going to move on to the next item here in the art auction. So much fun this year. What a great collection. And this is another favorite. One E, Walking Soulful Paws. Isn't that sweet? By Judy Lou Luce. This is watercolor measuring 24 by 18. And it's artist framed. Retail value is $1,600. Juror's Award for Figurative. Tell us about Walking Soulful Paws. Well, first of all, how can you not love this dog's expression? So cute. I mean, it is, it's really wonderful. And this artist is a very gifted watercolor painter in the traditional sense. I went on her website and her Instagram and was blown away by her very realistic style. But she developed this pointillism uh, about 20 years ago. And initially, yes, initially okay. you can see the dots and in watercolor. Now that's been done in oil and other in other media, but to do it in watercolor is something different, so different that uh, initially the traditional watercolor societies were rejecting her work, oh. <laughs> which makes no sense because this is so dynamic and so fresh and so new. And our figurative juror, uh, Jennifer Paczynski, particularly loved it. She said that it creates a unique internal rationale, that it has a sense of humor, a really strong visual language, and that it's consistent. And she loved the composition. Think about the point of view of this painting. It's really the dog's point of view, right? We don't see the people's heads. We just see sort of what dogs see, our feet, the shadows. Mm -hmm. It's really a special piece. You see the dog leading the way, too. Yes. Um, and any animal lover knows that they, they lead the way of our hearts. That is for sure. Sure. And I, I love the idea of giving this to, to someone who, who loves so much about animals, as well as you yourself, if you're an animal lover. Uh, this is the place to be right now by picking up the phone, calling the number on the screen, and getting involved in the art auction. This is a retail value of $1,600. And again, this is a juror's award for figurative. And I love that the artist pressed forward and said no. I know what I'm talking about. This is a watercolor technique for the future, and, and it is. And it's very uh, labor intensive. Sometimes her paintings can take years. What? Maybe she will come back and, and rework and add to that. And so wow. someone once asked her, how long does it take? And she just said that, well, each dot can be like a tear or something that brings happiness. So, so she think really... about that. I mean, think about that when you're bidding that there's a reason that retail price is set for that. Sometimes her work takes years. Right. That's huge. Right. Beautiful it's... piece. I love this, and I love the fact that the dog is just saying, um, bid, bid high and bid often. That's what that dog's trying to tell <laughs> us. So yeah. let's just get the bids coming in right now for this beautiful piece. Again, I'd like to tell you it's 1E, e, Walking Soulful Paws, a beautiful, tender, emotional piece. And this is something that any animal lover would love to have in their home and in their collection. Okay, let's keep this piece open. We're already ready for the next one. Did you have something you wanted to say about this as we move Just on? Just that I love the motion, too. You see the people's feet moving. The dog is in motion. Everything works Everything's about that moving. piece. Yep. Moving on and on. And that's what we're doing as well. By the way, thank you, Judy, for that, for that beautiful piece. Wow. Okay. I love this one as well. 1F, Cliffs in Color by Lenora Morris. Acrylic on canvas measuring 16 by 20. Artist framed, value $350. First place landscape. Check it out. That is stunning. What do you think? Well, would it surprise you to know that this incredibly colorful piece was inspired by a black and white photo. Really? She decided to take that photograph and give the rocks and the formations more dimension by using color. 
Mm. And I just love that approach. And she was, she was really uh, cute in her entry where she said, I had just gotten some new paints and I wanted to try every color. Wow. <laughs> and it looks like she has. And Our did a spectacular job in bringing that black and white to life. Look at how beautiful, Jill, look at the monitor right here, how beautiful that is. Yes. It's, it's exquisite. It really is. It really creates uh, a free-flowing and colorful style that's her favorite. Um, it's a brilliant piece. And uh, our landscape juror, Miles Herman, said that she had fearless brush strokes. And she also said it was a nod to Selden Guile and the Society of Six Painters, who you could see at the Crocker. He thought it had a retro palette and that it was a landscape that almost was a little bit abstract. Mm, very nice. I, I think it's spectacular. Uh, the bids right now are on your screen. This retails for $350. It is first place award winning art right here, first place in the landscape category. And I just want to point out that you will see there are, there are award winners throughout the weekend that are in affordable price brackets um, for many people as well. Uh, and I'm not saying that $350 is not a lot of money, but I'm saying that when it comes to art, these things, many of them are in affordable ranges. No, it's, it's very reasonably priced. And it's also a way that you can be at the ocean every day, which mm -hmm. is something I would like to do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. And you can do that by picking up the phone and calling the number on the screen. Um, by the way, um, all of these pieces are ready to go right into your home. So when you pick them up, they're ready to go. We have a lot of new artists this year, and we have a lot of new people um, who are watching as well. Final thoughts on this piece as we wrap up this half hour. Just that it's so colorful and beautiful, and the brush strokes and how she did create the dimension. You know that the formations jut out. You see the reflections in the water. I just think she did a beautiful job, and I, I love this piece. It is spectacular, and I, I have to say, I think it is worthy of being a first place landscape winner. All right, thank you so much. Great half hour. There's so many more to come. We're nearing the end of this break, which uh, means that we'll be checking in uh, across the way at the recap station for an update on auction bidding. All right, you've seen all of the artwork in our first award winner's break, and it's time to finish off the bidding. Item 1D, it's Fern Medley. We're going back to that. You can see it right here. And it's a photograph framed by the artist. Retail value of $500, and it has a bid of $800 currently. Isn't that fantastic? And that is a uh, bell ringer, unless I'm seeing that. Oh, wait, I don't know if that eight's going to a three. You know what? We're moving on to the next one right now. Item 1E e is Walking Soulful Paws, and that has a retail value of $1,600. And it has a high bid of $1,250. Obviously, we're having a little bit of a malfunction there, but I'm going to tell you that Fern Medley, by the way, has a high bid of $300. So it's still below the retail value, and you can get in on that right now. The Walking Soulful Paws has a high bid of $1,250, and you can make that happen, be the high bidder, by calling in right now. And look, we fixed your screen. Isn't that fantastic? And then item number 1F is the Cliffs in Color, and it is at a bell ringer, and it has a high bid of $900, retail value of $350. That's going to be uh, hopefully coming up on your screen. And again, Cliffs in Color, which you saw Rob and Jill just talking about. It's fantastic, great use of color and all of that. And it has, again, a high bid of $950 right there. Now, stay with us. There's so much more art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. What's wrong with following the proven method? Isn't that the surest way to produce satisfactory results? Today, simply producing satisfactory results isn't good enough. We live in a rapidly changing landscape. Those changes require new solutions. Innovation challenges the idea that old solutions will continue to solve today's problem. PBS KVIE is committed to the visual and performing arts through national productions like Poldark and Victoria to our local productions like KVIE Arts Showcase and the PBS KVIE Gallery, exhibiting award-winning art auction artists and California masters. PBS KVIE's commitment to the arts stays strong because of your participation as a donor and art buyer. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction 
and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the sculpture category. Awards juried by Joya Fonda. Sculpture features three-dimensional artwork in a variety of media. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kbie.org slash art auction. And we are back and I want to introduce you to the uh, Sue, there we go. We're going to get back to the next break. We want to introduce you to our Best of Show Award winner. She's right behind me. It's Sue Ballinger. And she's standing up right there. She's going to wave. Is she waving right there? There she is. And she's right here in the studio volunteering on the phones. Her piece was a bell ringer. We're so happy about that. It's going to go home to a happy buyer. Congratulations, Sue, and thanks for volunteering tonight. Okay, now we have more amazing artwork for you this break. Just waiting for a new home. Hopefully yours. Here's an overview of the sculpture that will be up for bid during the next half hour. Item number 2A, it's Carmel Jean, and it's by Deborah Crack Harnish. It's mixed media, measuring 24 by 15 by 15, and it's a retail value of $500. Item number 20, or sorry, 2B, you can see it right there by Frank Barrera. It's ceramic, measuring 13 by 9 by 9, retail value of $200. Item 2C, Janice by Don Yost, and it's clay measuring a 9 by 9 by 5, retail value of $125. Item number 2D, Circle Circle by Taylor Gutermute, and it's metal measuring 21 by 21 round, retail value of $375. Item 2E, Sheldon by Randy Wand, and it's mixed media measuring 24 by 20 by Five, and it's a retail value of $300. And item 2F is Beggar's Purse Wonton by Elaine Korn. It's clay measuring nine by nine by seven with a retail value of $400. Now, let's see the art with Robin Jill. Hello there, I'm Michael Sanford, and we're back for another round of amazing art. During this break, I'm pleased to be here with fine artist Kelly Rains. Hi, Kelly. Kelly is known for her work with pastels and acrylics, and she often exhibits her artwork at Archival Gallery in East Sacramento. We're glad to have her back with us this year as an art expert. We're going to talk about some beautiful sculpture this half hour, and let's begin with item 2A, Carmel Jean by Deborah Kreck Harnish. This is mixed media measuring 24 by 15 by 15. Its retail value is $500. Look at this, Kelly. Show us your expertise on this beautiful piece. <laughs> well, my expertise is my affinity and love and adoration for this piece. She, I've seen some of her other works, and uh, some of them are very, very uh, larger in stature. This is a beautiful, um, smaller piece. but. Still grandiose in its beauty. Um, what I love is she says that she's a frustrated dancer, so she gets out her frustration in creating tutus. <laughs> so I love that even with frustration can come art. This is a tribute to her mother-in-law, who was uh, for 30 years a principal secretary. And why is that? How is that employed into the materials? Good question. Well, yeah. on the body itself. So all of this is made out of paper, and there's different maps in the tutu. But I'll start from um, the top and work my way. Down. Down. On the body, there's ripped up pieces of a stenographer's dictionary, which is an homage to her mother in The backstory on a piece of work like this, it, there, it always seems to be remarkable, and this is another great yes. example of that. It's beautiful. I just, I love any artwork has its own story, and this one definitely has a story with actually written words on, on the bodice. And then there's the beautiful maps. They're uh, topographical maps from Monterey Peninsula that screamed to the artist, make a tutu with me, <laughs> um, with an exclamation point for sure. So she hand folds all of the pieces. She, she looks for the materials. They speak to her and then she created this beautiful, beautiful dancer. Look at the level of detail on this too. Isn't this amazing, Kelly? How There's about eight 
different levels of, of dress, I guess you'd say, on this. There's eight different levels. So she sees a paper. She knows immediately that it's something that she can use. Um, she takes it. She goes shopping through her own paper supply, and it starts forming. Um, she chooses the papers. She chose this one that's got holes and punches on it, or she adds holes and punches to it to create texture in the dress. And, and if you look at it, it's beautiful. It's almost like, like the dancer's doing an arabesque in the air. You can see the movement in, in the beautiful sculpture that's before us. So if you're a dancer, if you love dance, if you love dancing, now's the time to get involved. The number is on your screen. Bidding is underway for Carmel Jean by Deborah Kreck Harnish. And it just seems to be the right size to display almost anywhere and be a centerpiece in your home. It's a centerpiece, beautiful for a bedroom or a sitting room or anywhere that you want dance and movement and some sculpture. I love the delicate strength about this piece. So there's such a delicate quality in the materials in the tutu because it's all paper and you see the very uh, punched edges and frilly edges, but you've got the sturdiness of the, the pole that's holding it. And so there's this delicate strength that is much like you find in a ballet dancer. And what's interesting is that, you know, I just mentioned the size is ideal to put almost anywhere in your home and really be the centerpiece. But this artist has also given us large full-sized things like this in the past. Yes, so this is a smaller uh, a scaled version of what she, she's known for. Um, she's been making tutus every for a long time, for several years. She says each, each one is magical to her. It's magical to me. I, I want to be a ballet dancer when I look at it. And again, I love getting up close. Whoever is the lucky person to take this home, they can get up close and see the details of the dictionary pages on the pole and the base and the stenographer's pages on the body and everything else. Well, I'll tell you, if you take this home you'll have a wonderful centerpiece to your home celebrating dance celebrating great artistry by deborah Kreck harnish we'll keep the bidding open on this you see the number on the screen but this is your way to support pbs kvie let's move on to the next piece as we look at our beautiful sculptures in this half hour item 2b is paca mama by frank barrera this is ceramic measuring 13 by 9 by <coughs> 9 its retail value is $200. Interesting use of, I think, very interesting minerals I see in the work behind this sculpture. So I did a little bit of research and I learned a lot of new fun things that I'm going to share with you now. I love it. Um, so this is Pachamama and Pachamama means Mother Earth or Earth Goddess. So the technique that Frank has used here is Raku. Um, and it's Raku is an ancient 16th century, goes back that far, Japanese ceramics technique. So basically, in layman's terms, you take the, the pottery, the ceramic, you glaze it or not glaze it, depending on the finish that you want. You put it into a kiln for about one to two hours. When it reaches its highest temperature, you take it out and you put it into another vessel that's got some organic material in it, say straw or newspaper or anything else that'll burn. And the heat of the pottery sets that on fire. You then enclose it in there so it creates a reduction atmosphere so there's less oxygen. And when you pull it out, you've got these beautiful, unanticipated, you never know what you're going to get, textures and colors. Um, so speaking to the title of the piece, Mother Earth, you're creating Mother Earth out of using pieces from the earth. And there's a very meta quality to it. There's a real, that's a really excellent way to describe this ancient process that perhaps has been lost to most artists over time. But I wonder how Frank Barrera rediscovered it researched it and then implemented it in such a beautiful way. He just loves it. Um, he loves using older techniques. This is a beautiful piece and because of its quality and the way it's done, it can go outside. You can put, there's an inner cavity to it. So you could set a candles in there. It's, you can set it outside. It's, it's safe with heat, candles. You could put a smaller vase in there. You could put flowers in there. Um, and it's basically, he says, it's, it can hold a tea light or any other form of illumination, and it's almost as if Pachamama were wrapping her blanket around the glowing light, giving it sustenance and protection. Wow, it's got great utility indoors and outdoors. The iridescence, I think, outdoors would be absolutely astonishing to see the sunlight on it. It's so beautiful. And there's all kinds of details on the inside, too, and on the back, and there's beautiful... It's, it's got a very elemental... Um, primal, native, very beautiful feel to it. This is a one-of-a-kind sculpture by a very talented artist that has reached back into the past 
to come up with a technique that I don't think you'll find almost anywhere else. So this is the time to put your bid in to support PBS KVIE. You see the number on your screen. You see the bid levels that we have now. Let's keep this going. It's a wonderful piece of work, Kelly. And your final thoughts on this one? Um, I just want to point out Pachamama is an Incan, Incan word, again, that means Mother Nature. He's using an ancient Japanese technique and using bits of the earth to create this beautiful story and peace for everyone. All right. Thanks, Kelly. We'll keep the bidding open on Pachamama by Frank Barrera and move on to our next piece, which is item 2C, Janus by Don Yost. This is clay measuring 9 by 9 by 5 inches. Its retail value is $125. Well, it's a really interesting little sculpture that I think is, it, it's a fun one. We get a fun one from Don Yost every year, and this is certainly no exception. Well, I'm a super fan of Don Yost. I've had the privilege of showing with him in a show with our birds. And this is Janus, and uh, Janus is the Roman god of beginnings, gates, transitions, time, duality, doorways, passages, and endings. And uh, he's usually predicted, he's depicted with two faces. So you see the two faces of the birds here. There's some duality here. But I see, um, you're going to turn it for us? Yes, if you turn it, there's two more faces on the other oh, side. Oh, my goodness, look at that. So you basically have one piece, one sculpture. But there are four faces. So there's all kinds of plays on duality, endings and beginnings. And when I chatted with Don about this piece, he said, you know, if you get tired of looking at one face, just turn it around so you can look at the other. <laughs> so there's a lot of there's a lot of complexity behind what is really uh, in some ways just a whimsical little sculpture that you would enjoy just getting a laugh out of and sharing with friends. But there's some fun meaning behind it, too, and some deeper meaning. There's some deeper meaning. And, and there's so much, there's playfulness and there's personality. Don is really well known for his birds. And every single one of them have their own personality. Um, it's really fun to look at. And this can, he's been showing uh, professionally for about 15 years. He's highly collected. And I think this is a great addition for anyone. We're looking at the talons now, Kelly. A lot of detail in the, in the feet on this, these little birds. Yes, it's actually beautiful, and this can, um, uh, 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 it's suitable for indoor and outdoor. I probably would want it indoor just so I can be close to it because it's got such a personality. And, um, you know, one thing I also love about art is, and even humans, we sometimes anthropomorphize objects. So we can take our little emotions and put it on these birds and kind of get rid of the emotions and let the birds have those <laughs> if we want. Well, we really appreciate Don is a multi-year contributor to the art auction, and we always love his work. And you will, too. This is something that I think will be a conversation starter and a source of great merriment in your home. Keep the bidding going on this. You can see the number on your screen. You're supporting PBS KVIE with every bid that you make, and you can go home with a wonderful piece like this. This is something that I think... <laughs> It reminds me a little bit of Angry Birds, but it's much more fun and much more complex than that. So uh, people will probably mention that when they see it in your home. Absolutely. It's Angry Birds or, you know, they're just tired birds, whatever. They're very amusing, too. I asked Don if after he's done with the piece, if he looks at it, if he gets a chuckle. And he said every single time. Good deal. Well, thank you, Kelly. We're halfway through this break, which means we're going to keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for some bidding updates. And you've just seen the first three works of art in this sculpture break. Let's review the bids. Item 2A is Carmel Jean, has a retail value of $500. And we're below that bell ringer status. It's a $300 bid right now is high. I know that person is excited and they're hoping no one else bids, but you know what, let's have an auction. You make that call right now to the number on your screen and become the high bidder. You're gonna love having a piece of sculpture in your home. It's just such fun art. It's gonna be, as Michael just said, you know, conversation starters for people who come over. That's item number 2A, Carmel Jean by Deborah Crack Harnish. And I saw that when we were doing the previews. It's just a, a lovely piece. And again, a lot of people I think are gonna talk about it, but only one person can have it. Item 2B, Pachamama. And this is Frank Barrera, ceramic measuring 13 by nine by nine and has a bid of $200, which of course makes it a bell ringer. Isn't that great? We need other people to bid though, so we can, there's Kenny the Owl, and we can ring more bells. Every time that value goes up, it's more that goes to help fund all of the great programming that you love on PBS KVIE. And then item 2C is Janice. It's the one that Kelly and Michael were just talking about, and it's by Don Yost. Uh, it's clay, 
and it's $125 retail, but guess what? It's at $275 is the current bid. Actually, now it just bumped up to $300 is uh, the current bid. Our bid board, of course, over there is gonna catch up a little bit. I think that one's gonna keep going though. So if you really want that, you gotta call right now and be prepared to make a strong bid if you want Janice in your home. So again, item 2A, it's Carmel Jean, high bid of $300 right now. Get in on the action, call the number on your screen, 2B, Pachamama by Frank Barrera. And that's a retail value of 200 with the bell ringer status at 275 right now. And then of course, Janice by Don Yost. And it has a high bid right now, $325, but you can make it happen right now when you call the number on your screen and make this an auction. All right, let's head back to Michael and Kelly. Let's see some more art featured in this break. I'm Michael Sanford, back here with Kelly Rain. Some really beautiful art in this break, and it can be on your wall before you know it. The current bid is on your screen, as well as the number to call to place your bid. The piece we're looking at right now is item 2D, Circle Circle by Taylor Gutermute. This is metal, measuring 21 inches by 21 inches, round with a retail of $375. Kelly. Initial thoughts about this sculpture. Well, Taylor, thank you so much for a thoughtful and energetic piece. Um, Taylor tells us that a circle is a geometric shape that is made by drawing a curve that always has the same distance from the center point. It is an enclosed space. However, she created and painted this sculpture. She let herself go free within that enclosed space, which was also informed by the pandemic. She said she felt confined and all of us felt confined. And this may have influenced the piece a little bit, running around in circles in a confined space, but at the same time, endeavoring to be active and cheerful. Well, one of the things we all love about art and one of the things I love so much about this art auction is talking to experts like you who have talked to the artist and have learned so much behind the thinking and the motivation to create a piece like this. It really enhances the appreciation and the fact that this came during this challenging time that we've all had since March 2020 really reveals a lot about the outcome, the positive outcome that she created from, from the, this struggle. Absolutely, I love it too. I, it resonates with me in the fact that she, I find there's layers. Although it's a circle, there's layers, there's textures, there's levels, there's movement. One layer informs the next. Nothing is left incomplete by the, the thing that precedes it. Um, there's an exchange within the circle and, and quite honestly, you see out of it, at the bottom of the circle, there's a little piece that's starting to escape. Um, so the different colors, the electric purples and the oranges and the teals and greens and the white. There, there's energy, there's movement, there's electricity. Yeah, and there's, there's, a, there's a subtle three-dimensionality to this. It doesn't stick out far at all. It's, even though it's made of metal, it's actually quite light. So you, you get that depth to it. And at the same time, you get something that really looks nice, flat against a wall and offer some beautiful colors. Yeah, so the levels that I mentioned and the depth that, that you mentioned, some of the pieces, there's there's curvature in some of the metal pieces that are there. Um, so I would love to see how this looks, you know, in the mid-afternoon sun, if there's interesting shadows that are cast near or around it. Um, again, just the circle, a circle is such a an elemental kind of shape for all of us that resonates with all of us. And there's circles within circles, and then there's pieces of circles that um, are, breaking free maybe of that confinement. Yes, and obviously we can draw all kinds of metaphors, analogies to the circle, circle of life, and the circle of this entire art auction where you out there looking at this beautiful art, deciding to buy it, putting in your bid by calling the number on your screen there, you're creating, you're helping complete the circle with us, supporting the public television programming that you love and we love to make for you and to bring to you. So everybody wins, the circle is complete. Yeah both in the artwork and in this art auction. Taylor shares with us, even within a closed space, you can allow our, we can allow ourselves to be free. Um, this is, I wanna talk about the materials. It's fused pigment on metal. It took only three days for her to complete. It's a sculpture made from regular steel. She cut out a circle using her plasma cutter. The interior pieces were then cut out with an electric shear and arranged to imply dynamic movement. And then there's a uh, pigment on top of it. So it's a very hands-on, again, I use that word a lot, elemental uh, uh, artwork that is really vibrant and electric. Circle Circle by Taylor Gutermute. Wonderful piece of work. The bidding is ongoing. We'll keep it open. We'll move on to our next sculpture, which is item 2E, Sheldon by Randy Wan. This is mixed media measuring 24 inches by 20 inches by five inches. Its retail value 
is $300. Again, a three-dimensional piece on the wall, but there's an elegant simplicity to this, Kelly. Would you not agree? Absolutely elegant. It's delicate, yet it's strong. There's, again, that elemental feel to it because these are all found pieces as far as the branches and the wood. Randy is known for this style of work. He actually constructs the box that it's in. So he goes out for a walk, finds the branches and pieces that he wants to use, and then he constructs the frame around it and composes the scene that you see before him. Um, what I love about it, it it's earth. It's bringing the outdoors inside and, and reclaiming items um, offers a beautiful exchange of art and earth and nature uh, that I love. Yeah, you know, it looks incredibly nice on our black wall here. I, obviously, you don't absolutely have to have a dark wall behind it, but it certainly enhances the, it makes the birds pop out and the branches. Absolutely. You could hang this anywhere. You can hang it on a, a wall that's got very saturated color. You could be very simplistic with it. So it's, it's a piece that offers you multiple opportunities to enjoy it in different uh, areas of your home or office. Well, I think the, the, the simplicity theme is, is really prevalent here because uh, just seeing the, the birds on this these branches and the branch has a little bit of, of moss on it or some other kind of growth. There's a naturalness to it that is really enhanced, I think, by, by the simple wood frame. Absolutely, and, and there's levels to it too. So like sometimes a painting is just very flat across and it's, it's, it's one plane, but there's multiple, there's depth in this. So there's one bird that's a little bit more out in the foreground and there are different levels and different heights. And so it's not a painting that stops, you know, we talk about the edges of a frame on the bottoms and tops and bottoms and right side, but this is going outside of the box that he's created. So there's a sense of flight and accessibility that you might not find in other paintings. There's great imagination in this piece. Of course, we're grateful to all our artists who have brought these wonderful works for us to offer to you. Uh, Randy has been a multi-year contributor of wonderful works like this. And once again, we're grateful for his contribution this year. And we're grateful for, to you for coming to us, uh, watching this program, putting in your bids. You see the number on your screen. This is something that we really feel will do a lot to uh, enhance your home. So final thoughts, Kelly. I love the little ceramic birds and the reclaimed wood and the, the simplicity and beauty and elegance of the, the framing. It's, it's a treat to see this art. It certainly is. We'll keep it on, open. This Again, this is Sheldon by Randy Wan. Item 2E, let's move on to our next sculpture, which is item 2F, Beggar's Purse Wonton by Elaine Korn. This is clay measuring nine by nine by seven inches. Its retail value is $400. And the first thing that jumps out, Kelly, for me at least, is, is the am amazing mix of colors within the, the finished product. Absolutely. At first glance, it might look like it's, you know, just a, a white sculpture. But in anything in life, when you look at it, it's not just one color. There's beautiful shades of blue, a kind of pastel, um, and the whites are different colors in the shadows. So it... This sculpture is really beautiful at capturing shadows and texture. You can feel the folds of a beggar's purse. What is a beggar's purse, you say? If you don't know what a beggar's purse is, in food, it's usually um, like a kind of a dumpling where the filling is on the inside and you bring up the, the dough or the wonton wrapper or what have you. Um, and you bring it up and you collect it and gather it at the top, much like a little purse. And you have the treats on the inside like a purse does. Um, so this is a beggar's purse. And Elaine's background, she's actually a well-known journalist and also has been a food editor. So I did some research. She, um, amongst several outlets, but she was also the food editor for the Sacramento Bee at one point. Amazing. And she brought that, that love of food and that knowledge of food into this incredible piece of clay sculpture, the folds themselves, are they're so realistic. They do look like a wonton or some delicious uh, snackable item that you would find. Absolutely. I think there's a certain sense of joy and satisfaction when I look at this piece that makes me want to unwrap it because the folds are so expertly done and you can see this as a real item. I mean, obviously it is a real item, but you can just feel unwrapping it and getting the goodies inside. But you also can sense the motion that it took to wrap it up to get to that point. So it's such a beautiful um, representation of something that we all have enjoyed possibly when we've dined. Well, you know, I'm always impressed with the effort undertaken by any sculptors, clay sculptors particularly. How do you get that where you can get the folds and, and have them just flow so beautifully? And 
it just feels so realistic. Um, I think a lot of expert practice and being kissed by the muse sometimes. <laughs> this is a beautiful, stunning art. You can look at it at any angle. There's always a new fold. Again, this is something that in the afternoon shadows and lights of sun play and stuff might cast some beautiful shadows on the wall. Um, it's a beautiful piece by Elaine. And uh, again, her love of food has translated into her newfound love of ceramics. And as a reminder, this is item 2F, Beggar's Purse One Ton by Elaine Korn. It's worth mentioning, Kelly, that this is her first contribution to the art auction. Thank we're, you, Elaine. Yes, and we're so grateful for her to do this. And, and her multi-talents multi as a journalist, as a food expert, and now as a sculptor are, are out there for all of us to experience and, and to enjoy. The size on this, again, is 9 by 9 by 7 inches. So it's really a perfect size to put almost anywhere in your home. Retail value is $400. Bids are ongoing. You can see them on your screen. And please continue to give us a call at that number below. We're nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. Let's check in over at the recap station for an update while you pick up that phone and get it's involved. It's some great sculpture, and it's awaiting your bid right now. You have just a few minutes remaining, though, before it's gone. So let's review what you can still make a bid on. Item number 2D, circle, circle. And guess what? It is a bell ringer. We have a high bid right now of $600, and that makes it a bell ringer. You're probably going to see Kenny fly in there on your screen. But you can be the high bidder right now if you just call the number on your screen. That's an amazing piece, and there's a reason why that has that bid of $600 and is waiting for you. Uh, for your bid. Now, don't miss out. Call it right now. Item 2E is Sheldon. And who doesn't love birds and nature? Randy won. He sure does. And he wants you to be the winning bidder of this. Value of $300. Current bid of just $200. So you could make that a bell ringer right now when you call. Or maybe even stays underneath it. I don't know. It's an auction. Who knows what's going to happen until the very end. But it's not an auction unless you call. So Call right now. Think about the area on, in your home where you're going to put that in. I think it's an amazing piece. Item number 2F is Beggar's Purse Wonton by Elaine Korn. You know, uh, renowned food critic and such a great piece of art there. And you saw a little bit with the colors there. Uh, and who doesn't love dim sum? I mean, that is a wonderful piece. And you get to have all of those wonderful white hues and the blues. And you saw it's a substantial sized piece. You know, that's that's not something very small. It's nine by nine by seven. It can be yours. So remember, uh, D is circle, circle. That's item 2D. Has a current bid of $600. You can call in right now, though, and still uh, try to win that piece. Item number 2E is Sheldon with a current high bid of $200. And you can, of course, jump in on the action right there. And item 2F, Beggar's Purse Wonton, with a high bid of just $150. That's below the value right there, so you could swoop right in right now by calling the number on your screen and making a bid. So remember, everything that you do when you have a winning bid supports all of the programming and services that PBS KVIE provides everyone in this region, from the kids to everyone watching Masterpiece and Nova, Nature, Frontline, Studio Sacramento, Rob on the Road, KVIE Art Shake Showcase, all of the wonderful programs that you enjoy all year long. We do this for three days so we can help fund all of the rest of the days that you love. And of course, this is great for the arts. We love to elevate the arts and the artists of this region. We need you to call though right now and jump in on the bids. Now remember, D, circle, circle, uh, retail value of 375. You can jump right in there by Taylor Gutermut. Uh, 2E, it's Sheldon, Randy Wan, mixed media, $300 retail value, her high bid of only $200. That's right there, uh, right behind me. And then, of course, item 2F, Beggar's Purse Wonton, has a current high bid of just $150. So you need to call in right now. And I really, I'm gonna focus right now on this Beggar's Purse Wonton right now because uh, there are parts of it that you didn't see right at the beginning, but it's you saw it towards the end, you saw this amazing whites and the blues. And that is a piece that's gonna be in a nook or maybe even the centerpiece of your home. Really great centerpiece conversation starter. Stay with us. Much more art coming up in the next half hour of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Welcome to the 40th Annual PBS KVIE Art Auction. Join us all weekend for a celebration of Northern California's visual arts. 
Over 250 pieces will be auctioned off to the highest bidder, and you can be part of the action by watching and bidding on your favorite artwork. View the entire collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Then, when your favorite item appears, call 1-844-KVIE-ART to place your bid. Auction proceeds benefit the programs and services of your PBS station, KVIE. So thank you for watching and bidding. And now, let the auction begin. Bidding on items in the art auction is quick and easy to do. First, explore the collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Or keep watching PBS KVIE. When a piece of art catches your eye, call 1-844-KVIE-ART and a volunteer will assist you. KVIE accepts all major credit cards for your art purchase, and a member of our accounting team will confirm your payment within five minutes of item sale. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the California Masters category. This half hour recognizes the works of our region's amazing artists. Don't miss your chance to secure a work of art from a California master today. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Hi, I'm David Lowe and thank you for joining us for the California Masters Break. This portion of the art auction is sponsored by Crow and Decker and we'd love to thank them for their commitment to supporting the arts right here on PBS KVIE. And now here's an overview of the art that's going to be up for bid during the next half hour. We're gonna start with item number 3A. It's Condos Homage, 32 Palms by Miles Herman. It's oil on canvas measuring 10 by 18, framed by choice framing, retail value of $1,800. Item number 3B is Butterfly Fish, Bennett's Butterfly by Maria Winkler. And it's acrylic on paper, measuring 21 by 25, framed by the artist with a retail value of $500. Item number 3C is Trollop by Carrie Cotini. And it's article on board, I'm sorry, acrylic. What did I say article? It's acrylic on board, measuring 12 by 12. Retail value of $400. Item number 3D is Rose Tea by Victoria Brooks. It's oil on linen, measuring 20 by 16, framed by the artist, and the retail value is $1,600. Item 3E is Listen, Love, Learn by Lee Cavalgin, and it's ceramic, measuring 18 by 18 round, retail value of $600. And then item number 3F, it's Koi number two by Marcy Friedman, and it's oil on canvas measuring 16 by 20, framed by University Art Center, and the retail value is $2,500. Now, are you ready? Let's head over to see the art with our art auctioneer and experts, Michael and Kelly. Hi there, I'm Michael Sanford, and thank you for joining us for the California Masters Collection. During this break, I'm pleased to be here again with art expert Kelly Rains to discuss this amazing work, some incredible work here. So let's get started with item 3A, Condos Homage, 32 Palms by Miles Herman. This is oil on canvas measuring 10 inches by 18 inches, framed by Choice Framing. Its retail value is $1,800. Wow, does this jump out, Kelly? What a beautiful piece of work. When I found out that I was going to be speaking about this artwork, I uh, got a little nervous. I, I'm going to fangirl a little bit for uh, Mr. Gregory Condos as well as Mr. Miles Herman because I am such fans of their art. I'm such a fan of their art. And the title says so much. Miles Herman studied with Gregory Condos. Really? So Amazing. he painted this painting while Mr. Condos was still alive. Uh, last year, I believe. And it's uh, it's an homage to Condos' painting, Sacramento River with 32 Palms. So hence, uh, the Condos homage, 32 Palms. So it's it's a study, if you will, of Gregory Condos' original painting. And it's homage to, as he calls it, I think this is indeed worthy of an homage and a stunning painting to the maestro. Well, of course, we, we miss Gregory Condos. He was truly a, a regional treasure. We're dedicating this auction to him uh, this year, but obviously to have Miles Herman honor him 
and emulate him by doing work that reminds you of Condos, but certainly has its own distinct characteristics. Well, Miles is, he's got a very distinct uh, uh, style in and of his own, and I am such a huge fan. Um, there's beautiful, the colors are absolutely beautiful. Again, it is a study of Gregory Condos's, but this is, this is a Miles Herman painting as well. And Miles is really known for his beautiful colors and line work, and it's absolutely stunning and breathtaking. Well, the colors obviously are, are one of the great attractions of this piece. It's simple. It's absolutely perfect for any place in your home. But what really stands out for me is the vibrancy. Every single line from the water in front to the beach to the lines off in the distance and the palms themselves, everything just jumps out. It's an escape. It's it's an escape for any one of us who's who's looking at this, or you know, it's it's an escape and it's also a destination. So it can also be a memory. So it's it's something exciting and peaceful and serene to enjoy. It's beautiful. I want to talk about the framing. Um, the framer is uh, Choice Framing, and they told us when this piece first came into Choice Framing, they immediately started playing with the the blue, and they had a certain blue that they had in mind with the molding, and they wanted to preserve the signature. So they flew uh, the painting within that frame. So it also kind of sets the, the water that you see before us. It's floating within the frame, and it's a beautifully framed job by uh, frame, Choice Framing. That is a brilliant decision by Choice Framing. The fact that the, the painting just kind of floats there even adds to a certain dimensionality around it. And, and just, this is something... <sighs> You could put it anywhere in your house and, and people would be drawn to it. They'd want to study it and they would just experience it in a way that I think is unique among paintings this size. Bidding is ongoing on this right now. Condos Homage by Miles Herman. Herman. Uh, the number on your screen is the one to call. This is something that you really want to think seriously about as you look for art during this art auction. Final thoughts, Kelly. It, it's just, I want to I want to go to the where this place I want to go to there. This is a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful scene, um, and it's got for me just a surreal lushness um, that I that's familiar but also fantastical. All right, we're going to keep open the bidding on Condo Somage and move to our next item, which is item three B, butterfly fish, Bennett's butterfly by Maria Winkler. This is acrylic on paper, measuring twenty one by twenty five inches. It's artist framed and its retail value is $500. Again, colors are the first thing that draw you in. The vibrancy and the diversity of color here. It's absolutely blue. I'm, I'm going to fan and girl, fan girl again. Forgive me. I'm so tongue tied because I'm so excited. Maria is such a wonderful artist. I, I aspire to her level of, of artistry. Um, she painted this on what's called Yupo paper. And I'm speaking in kind of artist fangirl talk. Yupo paper is a synthetic paper that's not tree based. And so it's very difficult to paint on because it's a very slick, slippery surface. So the fact that she's done, you know, a wet medium acrylics on this, it, it adds to the meta quality of this is an underwater scene with a fish. So there's this kind of, you know, materials informing the, the content and, and vice versa. Well, one of the great things that once again, Kelly, that we appreciate about, about you and all the art experts is the background, discovering the background, finding out what the, the artist was thinking when they chose this type of paint or this type of paper or this type of frame. And it all seems to come together. To, to, to realize that the thematic thing around underwater even carried over to the, the, the material that she used to create this. And, and speaking of, because it's not a tree-based paper, one of the, the inspirations behind doing this, Maria works in series. And this is, um, she, she is focused on a number of things that are endangered. So endangered habitats, such as the wetlands, the vernal pools and marshes. Um, there is a concern for disappearing coral reefs. So this inspiration comes from her friend, Sam McGuff, who is a photographer and a scuba diver. And she was allowed uh, she let Maria use one of her photographs for this inspiration for this, this beautiful painting. Well, Maria's focus on preserving endangered places around the world is really evident here because that's a beautiful coral reef. The fish itself obviously is gorgeous and it's what you might see in a tropical paradise somewhere. But a tropical paradise that might, might be endangered might be disappearing someday. So her homage towards preserving that is really important. And it's, again, I love the, the use of material that's, you know, not tree-based and there's, there's a sustainable quality to it and her artistry. And Maria has been showing for years, uh, for over 50 years, and she's highly collected. And this would be an excellent addition to a collection. 
absolutely. And there's lots of reasons to love this painting. Just standing on its own is a great piece of artwork. If you love the oceans and want to protect them, this is a way to honor that. If you just want to bring some beautiful color to your home or office, that's a great way to do it with this piece. Bidding, the, the current bid is on your screen. Please call that number on your screen as well. We'll keep the bidding going on this, but obviously this is something that we really would like to see in your home. Once again, Butterfly Fish, item 3B, Bennett's Butterfly by Maria Winkler. Acrylic on paper, 21 by 25 inches. Artist frame, and again, retail value is $500, but we really want to keep the bidding going on this. Let's go to the next item, item 3C, Trollop by Carrie Cotini. This is acrylic on board, measuring 12 by 12. It's artist framed. Retail value is $400. Trollop. Trollop is an interesting uh, title for this, and it's actually right there on the painting, Kelly. What's yes. that about? Yes, it is. So it's maybe not a positive word for, for too many people with a, not a very positive connotation, maybe. But what I love, it, it's, it's kind of reclaiming a word. There's, there's a play in reclaiming the word. So from the artist, her inspiration, she loves to showcase hyper-feminine glam. And this is a fun, flirty painting about female empowerment. Again, speaking to reclaiming a word. Um, and when you reclaim a word like trollop, it can become powerful and self-affirming. So another thing that I love about this, I, I'm a fan of makeup and feminine hyperglam things too. <laughs> um, it's just a fun, beautiful painting. She's known, I've seen a lot of her paintings for using lipstick cases. She's got a vintage collection of lipstick cases. She's been painting them for almost 20 years. And it's a fun, really fun, fun painting. Yes, it, it really is. It, it's whimsical, but it also has kind of a key underlying message, which is, Derogatory terms or terms that are often interpreted as derogatory need to be reclaimed and there needs to be a certain pride among, uh, among being something that you want to be, regardless what, of what others might think. Absolutely. And, and speaking to the composition and the artistry of, of the painting, I love that she's, there's so much movement here with just the three lipstick cases and the word, the, the, the glam piece instrument, if you will, the lipstick is writing the word and reclaiming it. But it's set against a very grid kind of stationary background, which accentuates the movement of the pieces. Again, another thing that I've pointed out before that I love is when a painting goes beyond the, the edges of the canvas or the, the, the frame, and you know that, that that lipstick's got more work to do and, and more things to reclaim and, and glam up. Well, this is your time to get involved in bidding on this wonderful piece of work, supporting PBS KVIE. The number is on your screen, bidding is ongoing. Actually, as I look at this, Kelly, again, this is item 3C, Trollop by Carrie Cotini, acrylic on board, 12 by 12 inches, artist framed. There is a lot of detail there. As you, as you spend time looking at it, you see all the squares, each one slightly different color. And that makes the lipstick, the lipstick sticks, I guess, pop out even more vividly. Absolutely. Again, the way she's got them, uh, it's, it's the composition against the background of the grid and the fluidity of the writing and the lipsticks. And I mentioned in, in another break how I love seeing uh, glass painted. Here, I love anything that, that shows the light bouncing off of it. And you can see the light bouncing off of it in some of the lipstick cases, especially like here in the edges. So it gives such a dimension and I, I can feel those lipstick tubes turning myself. It's a fun piece. It's something that would be a fun gift to get or to give. So this is really something to pay close attention to as you're looking for that next gift for somebody. Original art is a wonderful gift in its own right. And when you buy art from KVIE during this art auction, you are supporting us in our efforts to bring all the great programming that you enjoy. We really appreciate your support. We'll keep the bidding going on this one and we will continue with our art auction, we're just about halfway through the break, which means we're going to keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. Well, we're having ourselves an auction and you can take away an amazing work of art when you're the winning bidder. Let's take a look at the three items right now. Condos homage, item number 3A, guess what? That is a bell ringer. You can see the bid on your screen right now. The high bid is 2200. So it's not closed yet. You can jump in on the bidding right now by making a call and then you can be the proud owner 
of the Miles Herman piece that pays homage to Gregory Kondo. So, of course, we are uh, honoring this auction after this year. So, high bid of 2200 but it's not closed yet. But you've got to pick up the phone and call. Item 3B is Butterfly Fish, Bennett's Butterfly by Maria Winkler. High bid right now of just $325. And I say just because the value of that piece is $500. And that should be a bell ringer. And you can make it happen. She is a California master. And you can have a one-of-a-kind piece of uh, art from a California master in your home as early as Sunday when you pick it up. And then item 3C is Trollop by Kerry Cotini. Retail value of $400. You can see the high bid of $250. Now, Michael and Kelly, they talked about reclaiming that word. Well, why don't you claim this piece of art? You can claim it by becoming the high bidder and staying that way. But, of course, if you claim the high bid and someone else calls and claims the high bid, that's what an auction is. So, again, item 3A, Condo Somage, 32 Palms by Miles Herman, has a current bid right now of $2,200. You can jump in on the auction right there. Item 3B, Butterfly Fish, Bennett's Butterfly, current high bid of $350. Needs your call to make it go up just a little bit higher. And then item 3C, Trollop by Carrie Cotini, has a high bid right now of just $250. You could make that a bell ringer. So, hey, that's the news right here from the Recap Station. Let's see some more art right now. That's right. The number to call is on your screen. And when you do, you'll be supporting PBS KVIE as well as the arts right here in our region. We're moving on now to item 3D, Rose Tea by Victoria Brooks. This is oil on linen measuring 20 by 16 inches. It has a retail price of $1,600. Kelly, talk to us about this piece. So when I reached out to Victoria, I always ask, you know, what an, what's the inspiration behind a certain painting? And she said Rose Tea was painted during the lockdown of the pandemic. She had an upcoming uh, painting show at somewhere else where it was all about teacups. So she had painted a series of teacups and fell in love with the subject matter so much that she painted this one. And we're all the better for it because it's beautiful and lush and inviting. There's something classic about this, and yet there's a, a great deal of detail. Once again, like any wonderful piece of art, the more you look at it, the more you discover. And obviously you've got the beautiful multicolored roses in full bloom, the wonderful vase with water in it, and then the teacup on the right. There's just so much going on here. There's so much going on, and I, I've, I've talked about this a lot. I approach art from a very storative, story narrative-based kind of uh, fashion. And I look at this, and, and there's only one teacup, and there's only one rose on, on, on the table. Yes, there's a bouquet, but there's one that's plucked out. Why is that one rose on the table with that one teacup? What's going on here? I want to know that story, or I want to be a part of that story. Yeah, there's a, there's a story behind this that that's fascinating to discover or just to make up on your own. What do you think is the mood behind this as well? Well, it's it's a very, there's serenity. I, th I, I get a sense of hope here. Uh, roses are such a, a, a love language kind of flower. Um, you got the pinks and the reds. It is oils. She likes oil because it, it gives off a very luminous quality. And you can see the light just dangling and kissing the petals on the roses. Uh, and the shadows that, that's being created by the bouquet itself onto the table. And it looks like maybe a very delicate lace table covering. It, it's delicate, it's serene, it's elegant and hopeful. Absolutely. And, and I think you're right. There, there's a luminosity that you just find all over this painting. And then the shadowing is brilliant. It's, it looks so realistic. And then the background behind the roses, Kelly, I just find it interesting. It almost looks to me like there's a pond back there, a beautiful there's, tranquil yeah. pond. Maybe there's a pond or maybe it's just a soft focus of, of high grasses waving in the field. And, and there's beautiful arcs in the painting, too. I'll point out that background. You see an arc with the kind of yellow. The table has got its arc, um, the coffee or the teacup. And then there's the arc at the top of the roses and even the vase itself. So there's a very circle kind of comforting satisfying composition that she's used. Tranquil, relaxing, beautiful to contemplate. Item 3D, Rose Tea by Victoria Brooks. Oil on linen, 20 by 16 inches, artist framed, retail value $1,600. What a, what a beautiful addition to, to bring serenity to the home. Beautiful addition. And I always, I'm always i always fascinated, just as an artist, how long sometimes a, a painting takes some money to do. And I asked her how long it took, and I loved her answer. She said, this painting took 35 years to complete. She says, says that because that's how many years she's been painting. It, it's a sum of all she's learned in all those years. Well, her, her brilliance, her experience, uh, her love of, of painting, has really come through in this latest work. We're so grateful 
to Victoria Brooks for offering it to us to offer to you. And the bidding is ongoing. Please call the number on your screen and you can perhaps make this rose tea your painting to bring home. It's beautiful. I don't Let's keep the bidding open on this and we'll move on to the next one. Item 3E. Listen, Love, Learn by Lee Cavalgin. This is ceramic measuring 18 by 18 inches by 2 inches. Its retail value is $600. Kelly, it, there's, a, there's a simplicity and a great message here. There is a great message, and sometimes the greatest messages are the most simplest of messages. Listen, love, and learn. This is uh, ceramic. It's from a series of plates that the artist has been making with positive sayings on them. And you can't get more positive than listen, love, and learn. I wonder if Lee Cavalgin was especially inspired to create this work, considering all the challenges we've all been through in the last uh, year and a half. Uh, I would say that that is a very good possibility. And, and even if it's not most recent, listen, love and learn is, is, is a direction that we can always use. That's always, should always be present for us. And it, it's a fun statement work. If you put this anywhere in your home, it's clay and glaze. I want to point out that the artist has been exhibiting professionally for over 50 years. And he's considered a California master. He is a California master. He is very well known. He's been in several exhibitions for over 50 years, like I said. Some of those ex exhibitions include the Crocker Art Museum, Gladding McBean, the Roseville Art Center, the California State Fair, and so many more. And that's just exhibitions. He's had many shows that he's been a part of as well. And he's been a past juror as we've selected art each year for the art auction. We're so grateful to all our artists, aren't we, Kelly? But obviously to have Lee offer us this piece is, is really special. It's so grateful. It's, it's such a conversation starter. So I, I would start too, like if you had to choose one, which one would you choose? Would it, would it be the listen, the love, the learn that you would want to do or is the one you should do? So there's such a conversation piece in this. Um, he is known for his spirit houses and his gates and plates. And this is a plate that we have here as an example. Yeah. What about the border and the trim? There's, there's obviously some. Well, there's great. So there's great texture on this piece. So um, the border has got different um, beautiful elements on the outside. There's, it's got great energy and movement. It's the same kind of finish that's on the words on the inside. So I might be imposing my own feeling on that, but the listen, love, and learn, it's extending beyond the plate and it's escaping from that center confined space um, where it should escape always listen, love, and learn. Well, of course, and we've, we've barely mentioned the, the graphic representation of all the three things that he likes us to do. Listen with the ear, love with our hearts, and learn with our minds. So he's got a lot of fun, literal representation in here. The ear, the heart, the brain, listen, love, and learn. Excellent. He, he is a highly collected artist, and wouldn't it be wonderful to add one of his pieces to your own art collection? You can do that by calling the number on your screen. The bidding is ongoing for Listen, Love, Learn by Lee Cavalgin. Again, this is just about the right size for any wall. 18 by 18 by 2 inches. There's a three-dimensionality to it that's nice. It's a it's wonderful piece. It's handmade in a studio. It's part of a series of plates that he's done. And so far, there are more of 20. So the lucky person could be ha, have uh, one of the, the series that's really important. And it can be hung on a wall inside or outside as well. Excellent. Well, we're going to keep the bidding open on this wonderful piece, Listen, Love, and Learn, and move on to our final item in this section, which is item 3F, Koi number 2 by Marcy Friedman, one of our favorite people. This is oil on canvas measuring 16 by 20 inches, framed by University Art Center. Its retail value is $2,500. Always wonderful when Marcy offers us some of her great work. She's such a philanthropist in the community, and she's also a wonderful artist. Uh, I, I get goosebumps when I see beautiful things. I also tear up a little bit, so I'm tearing up a little bit at this painting. I absolutely love it. The koi, it's beautiful. When I asked Marcy, I'm always interested, again, why an artist chooses their subject. I asked her, why did you paint the koi? And she said simply, you know, they are beautiful and graceful to watch. They are her own koi. So I love that there's just... She's also, there's a bigger pond or wherever these koi are living for her. And she's, again, 
microcosm it down into this little intimate moment that we see with the koi. Again, it's something that I love. The top koi is, is extending beyond the frame. So you know there's a bigger landscape, seascape here, but we're seeing this little intimate moment with these three koi here and it's stunning. That's really a good point, Kelly. And what, what also sticks out for me is that if you ever see koi in a pond, they're so much fun to watch. And they're all beautiful, but each one is unique. The coloration on every single koi is, is different. It's, it's like watching living art move around in a pond. And I think she's captured that so beautifully. These three koi couldn't be more different in their coloration. I mean, the white one with, with the orange dot, obviously that's a fascinating fish, mm -hmm. but they're all just, the way they're interacting together and, and, and melding their colors is quite remarkable. And they're so complimentary. And this is a very limited palette. There's not a whole lot of range of colors in here. And th it just gives us such elegance. And it, 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 it funnels it down to just the most very most basic, beautiful, beautiful, sorry, I was combining words, beautiful and graceful qualities in this moment that she's enjoying that we get to enjoy too, is bringing the simplicity and grandeur of nature inside. Absolutely. And the contrast between the, the bright, colorful fish and the beautiful blue water behind it, I think really makes it stick out, almost gives it a, a three-dimensionality that you wouldn't expect to see. I want to point out, I'm, I'm a huge fan of her work. Um, in part and mostly because of the beautiful brush strokes that she does. So you can see the energy, the movement of the water going across, across the koi um, left to right, right to left. And that gives such great movement and, and her brush strokes are giving us a just enough information of the, the subject matter and the motion and the energy and the environment that's there. And it's, it's stunning. Marcy Friedman is also recognized as a California master. And this is an opportunity to, to own one of her brilliant works. If you call the number on your screen, put your bid in right now, this could be yours. Item 3F, Koi number two by Marcy Friedman, oil on canvas, 16 by 20. Final thoughts, Kelly. I, you would be lucky to have this painting in your home. It's absolutely stunning. She is such a great artist and I study her work. When the cameras are off, I'm gonna get up a little bit closer again to look at it and, and see how she does what she does. She is really remarkable. Thank you once again, Marcy. Thank you to all our artists for contributing your wonderful works to this art auction to support PBS KVIE. Well, we're nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half hour. Now let's check in over at the recap station for an update on auction activity. That's right, we are down to the final couple of minutes, but it's not over yet. Hey, it's Friday night. Our volunteers, they're here to take your bids. Now, though, is the time to buy an amazing work of art and support PBS KVIE all at the same time. So let's review. We're actually going to start with item 3C, Trollop. It's still open by Kerry Cotini. It's acrylic on board, has a high bid right now of just $250, and you can be the high bidder right now if you call in and make just one bid. Who knows? Maybe it ends there. You could end up with that piece. Item number 3D is Rose T by Victoria Brooks. Has a current high bid of $1,200, and it is working its way up there to the value of $1,600. Remember, that's the value that Victoria Brooks would love for us to see, or even more, because that's the value of that piece. She established it, she made it, and that's her intent for KVIE to get that amount. Item 3E, Listen, Love, Learn by Lee Kavalgen, and that is that nice ceramic plate. As they mentioned, Lee's been doing art for over 50 years. That's a, a great piece that you can have with a bid right now. The high bid's just $250. You can move that on up towards bell ringer status. And then item 3F, it's Koi number two by Marcy Friedman. Value is $2,500, and you saw why. I mean, we just had that on the air, but the current high bid right now is just $950, which means there's plenty of room for you. Marcy's a very accomplished artist. That's why she's in the California Masters category. She has painted with uh, Wayne Tebow and Gregory Condos and others. You would want to be the high bidder on this piece right now. So again, item 3C, Trollope has that high bid of $250. Rose T, item 3D, has a high bid of $1,200. Listen, Love, Learn, item number 3E, has a high bid of $250. And then uh, Marcy Friedman's Koi number two has a high bid of $950. These pieces are gonna be open for just a few minutes and then they're gonna be closed. Your chance to bid and win gone forever on these four pieces. So make it happen because when you do and you're the winning bidder, that's money that goes in to operate the heart of KVIE, our programming, our services for kids, everything that you love when you tune in and see it. That's why we raise the dollars that we do. And then of course, we're always trying to raise the profile of the art and artist in the region. 
Stay with us. There's more art coming up in the next half hour of this PBS KVIE Art Auction. What's wrong with following the proven method? Isn't that the surest way to produce satisfactory results? Today, simply producing satisfactory results isn't good enough. We live in a rapidly changing landscape. Those changes require new solutions. Innovation challenges the idea that old solutions will continue to solve today's problems. Picking up your purchased artwork is quick and easy to do. Visit PBS KVIE Studios Sunday through Tuesday during these posted hours for this year's curbside pickup. For your convenience, PBS KVIE representatives will carry your artwork to your vehicle when you arrive. All purchased art must be claimed within 30 days of auction closure. For questions, location, and hours, visit kvie.org slash art auction. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the award winners category, featuring the best of this year's auction, carefully selected by the jurors and curator. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Hi there, I'm David Lowe and thank you for joining us for this award winners break. Here is an overview of the art that's going to be up for bid during this next half hour. Item number 4A, it's Harmony by George McCamey. And it's a photograph measuring 16 by 20, framed by the artist, has a retail value of $375, and it won a Curator's Award for Photography. Item 4B, it's Cathedral Under the Causeway by Deborah Van Holstein. It's oil on board, measuring 36 by 36. Hey, that's three feet by three feet. Retail value of $300. It also won a Curator's Award, this time for Landscape. Item 4C is The Valley is Hot, But We Will Fix It by Ed Forrest. It's oil on canvas, measuring 49 by 31, so it's a substantial piece, framed by Blue Bus Framing at the Hanley Gallery. Retail value is $900, and it won a juror award for contemporary classics. Item 4D is White Flowers with Lemons by James Hartman. It's encaustic, and you're gonna, of course, learn more about that if you don't know what that already is. Measuring 24 by 20, retail value of $1,500, and it won a curator's award for still life. Item 4E is Flying Grounded by Linda Gelfman. It's mixed media, measuring 32 by 24, Retail value of $300, and it won a Juror's Award in the Sculpture category. And then rounding out the half hour, item 4F is Pick Me by Kathy Dana. It's acrylic on canvas measuring 30 by 30. Retail value of $3,200, and it won a Juror's Award for Still Life. So lots of great art for you to bid on right now. Hey, phone lines, they're open. They're, and these people, the volunteers, they're ready to take your bids. Now, let's head over to see Rob and Jill. Hi there, I'm Rob Stewart. Thank you for joining us for the award winners category. So great to be with you. During this break, I'm pleased to be here with Jill Estroff, PBS KVI's art curator. Great to see you, Jill. Jill's put an amazing collection together this year from the many talented artists who contributed their work and lots of new artists this year as well. Uh, Jill, we have another exciting award winners break. This half hour, we begin with for a harmony by George McCamey. It is a photography piece measuring 16 by 20. Artist framed, retail value 375, curator award for photography. And I walked up to it and went, oh, it's an elephant. And that's exactly why I chose it because at first it just looks like contemporary shapes. You're not quite sure uh, what it is. It's beautifully cropped. And once you look at it a little bit longer, you're able to see uh, the eye as a focal point. And then it all kind of comes together for you. And that's why the photographer took it too. He happened to be at the Los Angeles Zoo and he had this connection and brief eye contact with this 
larger than life animal and he wanted to capture it. And I think he's really done that beautifully. Absolutely, has done so spectacularly. Uh, this piece right now, the bid is on the screen right now. Retail value is 375, pick up the phone and call the number right there, get involved in the auction and you can have this piece of artwork um, on Sunday. You can pick it up that early. Uh, this is the Curator Award for Photography, and I, I, I love what you said, that it, it could be so contemporary, and yet there it is, that eye that takes you in. Right, and he's done such a beautiful job with the framing to the point that one of our jurors, the contemporary juror, also noticed this beautiful wood that is, is difficult to put together the way the grain really works with the patterns in the elephant. That's so this, this artist really went all out to showcase his piece and I think he did a great job with that. Um, he's won a Juror's Award in previous auctions and uh, you can see why. George's work is really special and uh, I think it would be a conversation starter in anyone's home. Yeah, and a multi-year contributor, which is uh, fantastic. When I look at it from here, um, I see peacock feathers. When I look at it from here, I see a gazelle, and then I see the eye, and you know, boom, there it is, the elephant. Pick up the phone and call the number on the screen and place your bid. This is a Curator Award winner for photography. $375 is the retail value. What else, Jill? Well, another thing you look for in photography is the focus. Look how sharp the focus is. You can see every wrinkle, every hair, every marking on the side. And it it's, has so much depth. And the hair I'm talking about up here. Oh, and, I see it now. Yeah, yeah. and, the, and the, just the eyelash, the fringe of the eyelashes and sort of the rougher texture over here. It's really a complex piece but done in such a beautiful way that I think it would make an addition to anyone's home. Yeah, and I'll tell you, you know, we spent a lot of time um, at PAWS, the uh, Animal Welfare Society, as well as zoos all across the region. And they always say, when you look into the eye of an elephant, you can see and feel their soul. And when you see that eye right there, it emotes so much to me, so much wisdom. Right. We're, we're so connected to all the other beings on Earth. And this, this photograph is a great reminder of that. Oh, I love that. that yeah. is, that's a beautiful sentence. We are connected to every other being on this Earth. Something we need to remember, especially right now. Let's keep this piece open. Uh, it's a beauty. We'll move on to the next piece. George, thank you for that stunner. It's just gorgeous. This next piece, I, I am just blown away by especially after you told me about the reflection. I'll leave it there because Jill has a, <laughs> a great reveal uh, on this piece. This is 4B, Cathedral Under the Causeway. I, I love name, that's a great title for this, by Deborah Van Holstein. This is oil on board measuring 36 by 36. Retail value is $300. A curator award for landscape, and it is stunning. I agree, and actually the contemporary uh, juror saw it up because the landscape uh, works were up, and he said, that's so contemporary also, and that's what I love about it. It has such a beautiful abstract quality, and she said that when the causeway floods underneath there, you get this beautiful reflection, and that's why it's called cathedral. The way mm. you see the the stands, the poles reflected in the water there, and it's really Deborah is an emerging artist. She's been doing plein air for years. I, I think she's just fabulous. You said emerging. Wow, I would have said like really, really well, well seasoned. Well, and this is spectacular. Only emerging in that you see how well priced this large piece is for oh, that's 300. The, okay, so that's code. <laughs> <laughs> that's code is in that, is a, that's, yeah. a, that's a fabulous, no, I'm, I'm kidding, it's not code. What it means is that this, this can be yours quickly. Uh, as early as Sunday by picking up the phone, call the number on the screen, get involved with the KVIE art auction because every dollar we raise goes to bring the programming that you have come to depend on and that frankly is only offered on PBS than anywhere else uh, on television or online. These pieces sell very quickly. They go just like that. So if you're on the fence, 
you may end up stuck on the fence if you don't pick up the phone because by the time you call, it could be gone. What else? Well, she really loved the classic feel of architecture that the reflections created. I, I agree that, and there's sort of it's sort of an endless feel to it. Yeah, it's if also very at, thick. And you can see on the bottom that the top of the causeway that you can't see at this perspective, you see down there. So she did a great job with that. Oh yeah. Um, and she she likes to be influenced by the scene and the experience, by patterns, time of day, shadows on the wall, all these sort of deep ways of looking at things. And yet she's able to do plein air painting as well. I believe this one began uh, as a sketch and then was done later in the studio. It's also a um, great way to reimagine the causeway when you're sitting on it in traffic. You can remember <laughs> this beautiful piece of art that takes you away from all of that. Uh, art has a story and it takes you places and this can go right to you by calling the number on the screen. Current bid is on the screen, by the way, and I do want to, to mention again that the retail value is $300 for this piece, 36 by 36 Cathedral under the causeway. What else? I love the thick use of oil paint, the texture here uh, that you probably saw when the camera was close up before. It really shows a, a way of creating that depth and perspective. And it's very difficult to paint reflections, but she's really mastered it well. And then also the perspective as it goes off in the distance. Uh -huh. You know, taking a flat surface and creating that depth, that illusion, is not something that everyone has mastered but Deborah yeah. really has. It's very difficult. All right, this can be yours by picking up the phone and calling that number. Let's move on to this gorgeous next piece. I am in love with this. Wow, this is called, The Valley is Hot, But We Will Fix It. And I saw that written on the back of the canvas in the artist's handwriting as well. This is item 4C by Ed Forrest. Again, it's The Valley is Hot, But We Will Fix It. Oil on canvas measuring 49 by 31. And this is framed by Blue Bus Framing at the Handley Gallery. The retail value is $900. Juror's Award for Contemporary. Beautiful piece. It really is, and I, I love Ed's work. I own a piece of art by Ed, and it's one of my favorite paintings in really? my whole collection. And uh, yeah, he's- That says a lot. It does. He's He paints like five hours a day, but what I want you to look at is how the texture in the canvas, how it gets that way is through scraping and sanding. And Ed used to be um, a, a stone, a historic stone restoration contractor. And when he first began painting, it was hard edge style. This is called hard edge. But he doesn't use tape or anything like that. He uses stone tools to create these lovely edges. Really? And he told me that his focus is creating these shapes that will play well with their neighbors. Oh. Oh, I love that. Oh, maybe that is also a play on the valley is hot. We will fix it. Play well with your neighbors. I think so. I think so. And Ed will return to paintings that he's finished months before, scrape them, start again, and then you get these wonderful layers and textures building up. Uh, these colors are so sunny and bright and welcoming, and you can just imagine how it would illuminate any corner of your house. Yeah, or the focus of an, an entire room. So much is put into this, so much time, clearly so much emotion and so much thought, which I love when you see that because the story, whatever it is, comes through. It may be different from the artist to you, but the feeling is universal. I love that. Call the number on your screen right now. Get involved in the auction. The current bid is right there. Again, this is The Valley is Hot, but we will fix it by Ed Forrest. Retail value $900, and this is a juror's award for contemporary. Uh, I, this almost has a, a collage landscape from above feel. It could be any kind of interpretation. And in fact, your uh, Chris Dobear, who chose it, said that contemporary art is just reinvented and reevaluated by each generation, and it's never obsolete. And he loves the interlocking shapes, how they'd sort of nudge and push the neighbors. 
and it just it feels like there are many interactions yeah, like the, you said on a city street yeah. or perhaps an international stage you yeah. could, it's open to interpretation Absolutely. which is why we love contemporary abstract art it allows you to use your imagination and imbue it with whatever you want i love that i did not know that Thank you for, for that tidbit. That's, that's really good information. All right, we are halfway through the break, which means we're going to keep this beautiful piece open and we're going to check in at the recap station. All right, we've just seen the first three pieces of art in this break and the bids, they're coming in. And we're gonna talk about those first three pieces, but right now I wanna talk about a piece that's still open. It's item 3F. It's Koi number two, has a retail value of $2,500 and it is Marcy Friedman is the artist. High bid right now of just $1,200, which means you can jump in right now and get an incredible piece for your home or office. You don't want to miss out on that. This is going to close uh, very quickly, but you want to call in right now and be the high bidder. Item 4A is Harmony, and it has a high bid of $500. Guess what? On a retail value of $375, it's a bell ringer, and there's Kenny the L celebrating that. We always love to see that happen. Doesn't mean the bidding's over though, you can call in right now. Item 4, 4B is Cathedral Under the Causeway. And that, guess what, also a bell ringer, has a current high bid of 625. You can call in right now though, and become the high bidder. And then item number 4C, the valley is hot, but we will fix it. Has a bid right now of $500 that's been moving up. I've been seeing it on the screen. And right now that's working its way towards that value of $900. And hey, maybe that can be a bell ringer too, but it can't happen unless you call right now. So remember item 3F was Koi number two, high bid of $1,200. 4A is Harmony with a high bid of $500. 4B, Cathedral under the Causeway has a high bid of $625. And then the last piece in this first part of the break is 4C. The Valley is hot, but we will fix it with a high bid of $550. Now, hey, we're going to go back, take a look at some more art with Rob and Jill. All right, we're back for the second half of our award winners break. Love this break. Up next, we're looking at item 4D, White Flowers with Lemons by James Hartman. This is encaustic measuring 24 by 20. Retail value is $1,500. And this is the curator award for still life. And this is a new artist. He is, I'm such a fan of James work. I followed him on Instagram. I think at Earthman Jams is his, is his Instagram account. And every painting that he posts, I love so much. I mean, new to the, let me, tell y'all at home, I mean new to the auction. He's new to yeah. the auction, but he's definitely been painting. In the Bay Area, he was kind enough to even ship this to us, so we reached beyond our our region, and it was well worth it. This painting has a story behind it that I found almost hard to believe. Underneath this, he's used some antique newspapers going back to 1906, but it's to sort of work with the idea that the still life is sort of built around the idea of everything pertaining to history. So you can see some styles in there. You might recognize Matisse, you might recognize Cezanne. He's just done some beautiful things, making it his own. So that's when the big earthquake was, correct? 1906? Oh, so that in San Francisco, so that would wow. that would say to me also that if it it's saying that no, you know, you can come through. We can, my my goodness, beauty from the ashes. If that dates back that long, just the newspaper, right? And what you get with the encaustic, this incredible thickness and the textures and all of that. And he first started doing encaustics after seeing uh, the mummy portraits at the Met in New oh. York City. And he thought, it's a lost art. How do I work with this? And so he developed his own method of mixing crystals and molten bee wax. And Are then he kidding? then he uses a blowtorch to fuse with the wax, the oils. And so the paint sinks so low into the medium that you can really just see the depth. And so it it's, can be buffed to a high sheen. It's really uh, just an amazing process th that he does to get this effect. That is absolutely gorgeous. Hearing you describe that and then coming over here and looking at, looking at it from this angle, 
it's just, it's very deep the, uh, and it's wonderful how deep it goes back. Um, what does this make you feel? Just envy that he paints so well. <laughs> I would love to be able to paint like that. And he also, this is an invented study. So in other words, he created this purely from imagination, which is something one can do when one's been painting wow. for a long time. Most of us set it up, get the light, get the shadow, capture it. Maybe we photograph it first just to kind of get a sense of it. But no, he was able to come up with this whole thing. And you see, there's really another uh, bouquet and vase in the oh, back yeah. here in the window. So he really creates that depth. And these lovely shadows with the, with the pale blue and lavender, it's just a gorgeous piece. It's Spectacular really piece. And exquisite. you see it right there on the screen. This is a beauty. Um, and this can be yours by picking up the phone and calling the number on your screen. This is White Flowers with Lemons by James Hartman. This is encaustic, measuring 24 by 20. Retail value is $1,500 in the Curator Award for Still Life. And this is a spectacular piece. Remember, pick up the phone quickly and call because these pieces move very quickly. And there you see the current bid on the screen. Our time is up. We have to move on to the next one. I could sit here and talk more about this one. And I, I see a smile on your face. So maybe you had something else to say. You want to throw it in real quick or you want to move on? I uh, Just that I hope he keeps contributing because okay. it's such a beautiful work. And I, I know, I, I do too. And he's, he's new to us and I hope he'll come back next year. Wonderful. Okay, this is 4E, Flying Grounded by Linda Gelfman. Mixed media measuring 32 by 24. Retail value is $300. Jurors award for sculpture. For sculpture. Yes, because of the depth. And it's interesting, too, because uh, Linda Gelfman is actually a well-known ceramics professor at American River College. Textiles, but, okay. Yes, but now, well, ceramics. But now she considers herself, in her own words, to be a tufting maniac. Tufting. Because someone gave her a tufting gun, and she just loves how immediate this process is. She said it's like drawing with yarn on steroids. Wow. And I love that. <laughs> and you know, I thought tufting was a lost art, and right. it's not. No, no. And juror uh, Joya Fonda said about this that it was a surprising piece of fiber art, that it was sort of this fresh take on macrame, different colors, sort of a less r rigid relationship to the grid, and not, not stuck obeying the work and the weft of the material. And the rows are all going in, in different directions. And she said it made her want to touch it. Mm. And I think that's true. It's very tactile. And she, she called it a tufting gun drawing. It is absolutely exquisite. I love the size of it and the thickness of it and the story that you just shared from, from a ceramic artist to this wonderful, you called it a tufting what? Uh, well, that she calls herself a tufting maniac, but I will tell you, I've gone to the E Street Gallery. In fact, I saw this on the wall and begged Linda to put it into the auction. Really? But I wound up buying one of her ceramic bowls. It was so beautiful. Wow. And as she's, she's really a multi-talented artist, and she's taught generations in ceramics at ARC. She's a much beloved professor. Awesome. We love hearing that. And we would love to hear that you are the lucky bid uh, coming in for this beautiful piece right here that you see, Flying Grounded by Linda Gelfman, amazing artist, mixed media measuring 32 by 24, retail value 300. And the phones we want to get ringing for this beautiful piece, $300 is the retail value. You see the current bid on the screen. Um, and I just also want to say, as you mentioned, beloved artist, and I think that that is a great way to, to pass on art is to give art as a gift. So you could be the lucky winner and the lucky bidder on this by picking up the phone and calling the number on the screen. 
this is really a unique fabric piece. It is, and she said that it was akin to a ceramic sculpture with coils laying down one line after another. And you can see that here. For those of us who have started out in ceramics, you know that the first thing you might make would be a coil pot. And so she sort of replicated that here. And you can, so it's a nod to her ceramics as well. But oh, it's I just, see that. It's just so bright and beautiful, and it would just brighten up any room. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, we're gonna keep this piece open. That's exquisite. And we're gonna move on to this next piece, which is, oh, look at the color. Wow. This is 4F. It's Pick Me by Kathy Dana. Acrylic on canvas, measuring 30 by 30. Artist framed, retail value is $3,200 and the Jura Award for Still Life. This is a gorgeous piece. It really is, and Kathy Dana is a painter that I've also collected. I just love her work. Uh, this piece was on the September Inside cover, so mm -hmm. it might be familiar to you that way. But Kathy is just a wonderful painter, and she says that she called it Pick Me because the, the tree in this is sort of like a family member to her that over the years it's given her so many oranges oh. and so many wonderful things. And Kathy is a huge fan of trees. In fact, she had a solo show at Art House uh, featuring many different paintings of trees that she's loved over the years. I love hearing that, that story of how the, the tree has given so much to her. Uh, and when you get involved in this auction, you are giving so much back to the community by keeping our programming coming to you. This right now can be yours by picking up the phone and getting involved in the auction. This has a retail value of $3,200. It is a spectacular piece of art and it can be yours. The, the title says it all and it's speaking right to you. Pick me, pick me by picking up the phone and calling the number on your screen. I love the intentional white on here. Right, the, the layers of color and how she keeps it from being too busy is by having this white background. But she, she loves to use acrylic paints as if they were oil by layering and layering. In fact, people have often mistaken her work for oil painting. Uh, and also Cecily Hastings, the juror who chose this, said that she thought the composition was complex but not busy and that the colors are so well balanced and the cool background she's described as almost fog-like. Mm. So she might have been going for that, but it's, it's just beautiful. And the complimentary, the, the orange and the blue just pop. It's a really beautiful piece. That is gorgeous. I know she's been a, a past contributor as well. And I could see someone doing an entire kitchen around this. this I mean, this is really beautiful. It's a beautiful piece. And Kathy will be our first artist uh, featured in 2022 in the KBIE gallery. Fantastic. She's been chosen to do an exhibition. She's already planning it now. And I know it'll be a wonderful one to look at. Yeah, just look at this. This one right here is a testament to that. This again is Pick Me by Kathy Dana. Acrylic on canvas measuring 30 by 30 artist frame. There you see the beautiful colors popping through the screen right to you. And this is a retail value of $3,200. There you see the current bid. This is a juror's award. This is another award-winning piece for still life. And, and this really captures and celebrates our region and the agricultural farm to fork bounty that we are. The, this is a scene that you could see right here in Northern California or in your home every single day for the rest of your life if you pick up the phone. Okay, we are going, can you believe it? We're already at the end of this break right here. We're nearing the end of this half hour, the final opportunity for you to bid on the art featured in this half hour. A big thank you to this lady right here, PBS KBI's art curator, Jill Estroff, for spending this half hour with us. Now let's check in over at the recap station for an update on the auction bidding. You've now had a look at all of the artwork available this past half hour. Don't miss out on your opportunity to win your favorite piece that you just saw. We're going to take a look at the items that are still open right now. Uh, we're going to go back actually to item 4C. The valley is hot, but we will fix it. Has a high bid of $1,000. Guess what? That makes that a bell ringer. And uh, But it's not closed yet because there are still multiple people bidding on it. So jumping on the action right there. 
Item number 4D is White Flowers with Lemons by James Hartman. And that currently has a high bid of $1,200. And that's getting so close to the retail value of $1,500. Item 4E is Flying Grounded. And guess what? That is a bell ringer because the high bid right now of $300 has matched the current value. But it's not closed yet. It's still open. So if you love that piece and you loved how they were talking about that and you loved what you saw, Call right now, be the high bidder. And then item 4F is the last piece. That's Kathy Dana's. It's a juror award winner in still life. And you saw it's a substantial size bid of only $900. Actually, there's, it's now going to change. It's a high bid of $1,000, but still well below the value. Jump in right now and you want to do that. So again, item number 4C, the valley is hot. High bid of 1,000. 4D, white flowers with lemons is has a high bid of 1,200. 4E, flying grounded, high bid of 300. And again, 4F, pick me, $1,000 high bid. Call though and make that happen right now. Hey, stay with us. There's much more art coming up in the next half hour. Of the PBS KVIE Art Auction. Welcome to the 40th annual PBS KVIE Art Auction. Join us all weekend for a celebration of Northern California's visual arts. Over 250 pieces will be auctioned off to the highest bidder, and you can be part of the action by watching and bidding on your favorite artwork. View the entire collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Then when your favorite item appears, call 1-844-KVIE-ART to place your bid. Auction proceeds benefit the programs and services of your PBS station, KVIE. So thank you for watching and bidding. And now, let the auction begin. Bidding on items in the art auction is quick and easy to do. First, explore the collection online at kvie.org slash art auction. Or keep watching PBS KVIE. When a piece of art catches your eye, call 1-844-KVIE-ART and a volunteer will assist you. KVIE accepts all major credit cards for your art purchase and a member of our accounting team will confirm your payment within five minutes of item sale. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the California Masters category. This half hour recognizes the works of our region's amazing artists. Don't miss your chance to secure a work of art from a California master today. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Hello, I'm Rob Stewart, and thanks for joining us for the California Masters Break. Great to be with you. This portion of the art auction is sponsored by Crow and Decker, and we would like to thank them for their commitment to supporting the arts on PBS KVIE. And now we will take an overlook and an overview at all the art that's coming up for a bid in the next half hour. It begins with 5A Double Enzo the popular William Ishmael steel measuring 20 by 20, retail value $1,500, already have a bid there of 650. Item 5B is Water's Meat by Bob Miller, acrylic on board, measuring 20 by 24, and the phones are hopping, framed by University Art, retail value is $650. Item 5C, Tipper by Isabel Shaskin, charcoal measuring 24 by 18, Artist framed, retail value $600. And item 4D is Picasso Vase by Thomas Sellis. This is ceramic measuring 16 by 10 by 10. Retail is $400. Item 5E in Petaluma by Margarita Chaplinsky. This is oil on board, measuring 20 by 20. Artist framed, retail value $800. And item 5F is Gentle Breeze by Carol Hodgson. This is pastel measuring 18 by 18. Artist framed, retail value is $650. Okay, and I wanna say one thing about Margarita's fantastic piece, Chaplinska. It is an oil on board, 20 by 20, retail $800. Okay, we're gonna now check in the pieces available on the bid. This half hour, let's head over to see the art auctioneer and the expert to check out all the art. 
Hi there, I'm Christina Salerno, and thank you for joining us for the California's Masters category. During this break, I am pleased to be joined by Maria Winkler, Professor Emeritus of the Art Department at California State University in Sacramento. Maria holds an MFA in Painting and Drawing and a PhD in Art Education. She continues to exhibit her work regionally, and her paintings are included in several permanent collections. Maria, thank you so much for being here today. I'm so excited. My pleasure. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is item 5A. It's Double Enzo by William Eschmel. This is steel, which is interesting, and it's measuring 20 by 20 with a retail value of $1,500. This is a really interesting um, piece, Maria. Can you tell me, what is the material that we're looking at here? Well, <clears throat> William has been working with steel for a number of years. He finds it has endless possibilities. So, but the steel he uses is very thin gauge so that it's lightweight and that it um, is more receptive to the acids that he uses to colorize it. So this is acid, a, re a result of acid on the steel, and then he puts roof tar, that's roof tar, for the double enzos, which is a, zen a symbol um, representing the circle of life with no beginning and no end. It's a symbol he's used for many years. Wow. However, to get the roof tar to this uh, particular stage, he t doesn't. Uh, he lights it with lighter fluid, which he doesn't obviously do in a studio. But as he uh, explains, he does it outside so he can frighten as many neighbors as he can. <laughs> wow, what an interesting backstory to this. And I understand he's, he's quite a respected sculptor as well. And you can almost see, it almost looks like sculpting. It, it's, if you look closely, it's a raised black surface. Yes. And that is the roof tar that you were referring yes. to. So it's, it's textured, correct? It's textured and, and three-dimensional. And even the piece itself is floating back from the wall because it has steel angles behind it so that it is brought forward. That's interesting that you point that out. It does look like it's floating. And I love the orange and the black. Can you talk a little bit about the, the colors that we're looking at? Well, that is a pretty vibrant orange for acid. Um, and so, it, and you notice how the coloration varies over the piece. And the black kind of blends into it, so it's not like just sitting on top of it. It's pretty unique. I've seen a lot of William's work, and I've never seen one with roof tar. It's really unique, and this item can be yours. All you have to do is call the number on your screen and place a bid. These items go really quickly. The uh, bid is up on your screen. If you'd like this in your home or your office, go ahead and give us a call right now. And we're moving on to item five. Can I make and we're recapping. I'm sorry about that. Item 5A, Double Enzo by William Ishmael. Again, this is steel measuring 20 by 20 with a retail value of $1,500. Do you have some additional thoughts, Maria? I have one comment. This is meant to be hung indoors, not outdoors, because it's important to know where, whether the piece can withstand the elements. So this is definitely an indoor piece that would look good in any room. That's a good thing that you pointed that out because it is steel, so you might think that it's right. outdoors, but you want to maintain that pristine condition. Exactly. Well, thank you so much. We're going to keep this one open and we're going to move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 5B. It's called Water's Meat by Bob Miller. This is an acrylic on board measuring 20 by 24. It was framed beautifully by University Art Center with a retail value of $650. Now, Maria, the, Bob Miller is obviously a well-known artist in the area. Can you go ahead and tell us a little bit about this painting and about the artist? Well, Bob Miller is one of the most versatile artists I know. He works in so many medias. He's primarily a graphic designer and had his own graphic studio for many, many years. He's worked for numerous TV stations as their um, artist. He's developed wine labels, brochures, advertisements, billboards, <clears throat> logos, print ads, and illustration, and illustrated books. So this piece is an original piece that was used as a fundraiser for KVIE by making prints from it. And so people who donated to the PBS NewsHour were given a, a limited edition print of this piece. 
That's interesting. And a reminder to our folks out there, this, this is the original. So although there are prints, That's right. um, this is the original painting. And can you tell us a little bit more about, about what we're looking at? Well, it's called Where Rivers Meet, although it's not a specific place. It's really more like a representation of the two rivers that run in uh, our area. It absolutely looks like the valley with the fields and the rivers. So right. if you're somebody who lives in Sacramento or near the river, this would be a great piece for you to have. All you have to do is call the number on your screen. The current bid is also on your screen. Give us a call. This piece will go really quick. Um, what else can you tell us about it, Maria? Well, if you look at the river, uh, you notice how it's lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. So that gives a sense of space because things get lighter as they move away from you. So you have some depth in the composition. And then, of course, all the uh, fields that we have in our area, the rice fields and all the others, are represented by those um, geometric shapes. The geometric shapes remind me of his graphic background that you mm -hmm. mentioned earlier because it's it uh, almost looks like it could be a print but it's a beautiful painting oh no it's definitely a painting and it's mounted in such a way that the painting is on top of the back surface the mat i wanted to talk about that frame you it's almost like you have three different frames if you look closely because mm -hmm. it's kind of sticking out that's a little unusual it is unusual but it's nice because you really see that it's a handmade painting and it's not behind glass and it's not matted well because it's um because it's acrylic, it, of course, it doesn't need glass, but it's a really nice way of framing it. It's, it's a really a lovely piece, and it's a great reminder of Sacramento, the rivers, our region, a local artist, and again, an original piece of art that you can have if you just call the number on your screen and place a bid now. A reminder, these pieces go so quickly. So if you're interested in this piece or thinking about it, you want to place the call now and get in on the bidding. Do you have any final thoughts, Maria? I really love the aerial view because you don't often see that, of course. And so you really get a sense of perspective. Absolutely, different perspective than what you normally see. Right. All right, we're gonna keep this piece open for more bidding and we're gonna move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 5C. It's called Tipper. It's by Isabel Shackson. This is a charcoal and it's measuring 24 by 18. It is framed by the artist with a retail value of $600. This is a pretty cool cat, isn't it, Maria? What can oh, you tell us about this there's cat? There's a whole story about this cat. Uh, first of all, Isabel is one has frequently donated work to KVIE. And usually her work is larger. It's 30 by 40 inches, and it has been cats before. But this particular cat was a feral cat that she had found and adopted. Really? So this is her own cat? This is her own cat, and a friend had named it because of the white tip on its tail. That's why it's called Tipper. Oh, there's Tipper's tail right there. Mm -hmm. I love that. And can you tell me a little bit about the red background that she chose against right. the, the cat? Well, she calls this a charcoal, and of course it is. The black part is charcoal, which is made from burnt wood. Uh, primarily uh, grapevine or willow. And the red is called Conti crayon, which is a form of charcoal that is mixed with clay and pigment. So you really could say the whole thing is made of charcoal, but you have the Conti crayon as the red and the regular charcoal as the black. I love how realistic it is. It almost looks like this cat is, is watching you no matter where you stand. Mm -hmm. um, so this can be a great piece for that cat lover in your life, or maybe you love cats or you have uh, somebody within your family who loves cats. If you want to place a bid and take this piece home, all you have to do is call the number on your screen. The current bid is also on your screen. Give us a call. Um, what else can you tell us about this neat piece? Well, I like the pattern of the rug that the cat is sitting on because it brings in the black that is part of the cat into the red and ties the composition together. So, and you can also see charcoal underneath the Conti crayon. You see the kind of muted color with a bit of black. So really the whole thing ties together beautifully color-wise. It does. It would really stand out on, on really any wall because of the mm -hmm. colors that you're talking about. And also a reminder to our viewers that this is a California's master's piece. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a really exciting break that we're in right now. And it's your cho it's your chance to own a California master's by calling the number on your screen and placing a bid now. Um, Maria, what do you what do you love about this piece? What kind of captures your attention about it? Well, the cat looks just like a cat who is kind of 
woefully looking at you. He does look a little, <laughs> yeah, he looks a little serious. <laughs> and uh, in a very natural pose, and I really like the composition because you have an even balance between the cat and the background, and I like the fact that the cat is going off the edge of the paper so that you really feel there's more to the cat that you're not seeing. So I think compositionally it's very successful. It's very striking. I think the cat's eyes are what's most striking yes. to me. Yes, and that is in. your focal point because it's looking right at you. Absolutely. So just a reminder, this is item 5C. <laughs> it's called Tipper, named after the cat by Isabel Shaxon. This is a charcoal, as Maria talked about, the different types of charcoal on there, measuring a 24 by 18. It is framed by the artist, beautifully I might add, with a retail value of $600. All right, well, we're halfway through this break, which means that we're gonna keep this piece open and check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. All righty, thank you so much, Christina. And you've just seen three amazing works of art from our California Masters Collection. Let's get an update on where the bids stand right now. This is so exciting watching all the numbers move around. We have Double Enzo by William Ishmael. This is a highly collectible artist. Uh, the Circle of Life, you see it there. His first roof tar piece. Right now, this is at $650. Retail value is $1,500. Pick up the phone, call the number on the screen and get involved in the auction. 844-584-3278. That is how you take this piece home. 650 right now. We're calling for 700. Let's move on to 5B Waters Meat. Retail value is $650. We're at 550 for Bob Miller's beautiful acrylic on board measuring 20 by 24. This is a showstopper. The color is just pow when you see it. And right now this piece is at $550. We are calling to bring this up to $600. And the next piece is 5C Tipper. $600 is the retail value. And we have a high bid right now of $250, looking to bring this up to $300. And this is an exciting auction. Pick up the phone, dial the number on your screen. That is how you get involved in the KVI PBS Art Auction. And just again, I want to tell you that uh, item 5A, Double Enzo, William Ishmael's piece, uh, steel measuring 20 by 20, beautiful piece. Uh, retail value is $1,500. That one is right now currently at $650. Uh, Waters Meat by Bob Miller, acrylic on board measuring 20 by 24. That piece is currently at $550. And Tipper by Isabel Shaskin, and that is charcoal measuring 24 by 18. A retail value is $600 and $250. That just went up to $300. Let's bring that to $350. We have a live auction going on that one. Every dollar, every dollar goes to support the programming that you have come to depend on and enjoy here at PBS KVIE. And this weekend is all about bringing the arts to you as well as our mission. Now we're going to head over to the arts for the second half of the break. Let's take it away. Some really beautiful art in this break, and we want you to get involved with the action and win your favorite piece today. The current bid is on your screen, as well as the number to call and place your bid. The piece we're looking at right now is item 5D, Picasso Vase by Thomas Sellis. This is ceramic. It's measuring 16 by 10 inches round with a retail uh, of $400. Maria, this is a really neat piece. I love this. What strikes you about it? Well, first of all, it, the theme is Picasso. And Picasso, Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> well, Picasso was very influenced by African masks when he first saw them at an exhibit in Paris. And he does his faces in, in multiple ways with sometimes three eyes. Um, they're certainly not realistic because he's really trying to get at the essence of the psychological part of the person. Now, Tom is primarily a painter, especially of the American River, but he also is a teacher. And when he was teaching for the Elk Grove School District, he was teaching ceramics and introducing the subject of Picasso. So he wanted his students to interpret some of Picasso's work in another form, in this case, ceramics. And if we turn this, we can see that there's another face on the other side. Which is equally striking. Both faces are They're equally great. striking. Yes. So this piece is handmade by rolling a slab out of clay for the base. And then three enormous coils that are three inches thick are laid on top of each other. And he smooths that out with a, a wooden tool to create the shape of the vase. 
Wow. I love that. I love the history behind all of that that you just shared with us. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Maria. This is such a neat vase, and it can be yours if you place a bid now. Uh, the number is on your screen, and the current bid is on your screen as well. Um, this is a piece that you could have in your house anywhere, and it's very striking. I, I can't think of another word to describe it because it just draws your eye. No matter where you're standing, there's something to look at. It's very beautiful, and it can hold flowers, but if you are going to put water in it, you need a vessel inside first. Like oh, that's a good tip. So why don't we keep turning it to take a look at all the different sides. Um, as Maria mentioned, you could use this. You could put flowers in it. Let's go ahead and take a look. Let's stop there to take again a look at the Picasso face. Again, this piece is called Picasso vase. And we can see why, <laughs> because that is a very, uh, I mean, you look at it and immediately think Picasso. Well, he's done quite a few vases with a Picasso theme. And I do want to say how much work is involved in making this piece. Um, the glaze, for example, which is shiny, is really glass. And so glaze is composed of silica, aluminum, oxide, and flux. And you have to know the, uh, the proportions and the, high, and the firing level in order to get it all to work together. So you really have to be a, a mathematician, a chemist, and an artist to, come, to do something like this. It's not easy. Oh, it doesn't look easy at all. Um, and it's a good size. So this is a piece that you could have in your home, uh, maybe your entryway, uh, have flowers or not have flowers. It stands alone as a piece of art. Um, and it really draw your guests in. And it's a piece, an original piece of art that you can have by calling the number on your screen and placing a bid now. Um, these pieces go very quickly and something like this is obviously gonna go very quickly. Um, so many details to look at in this. And the colors are so vibrant. And I love the colors. I especially like this space. And there's a moon on one side. And a sun on the other. And a sun on the other. I just noticed that as you were turning that. So the camera's panning up right now. We have the sun right there. And on the other side, if you go ahead and turn it, we have a moon. That's a nice little detail. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, we're gonna keep this piece open for you to continue placing your bids, and we're gonna move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 5E. It's called In Petaluma by Margarita Chaplinska. This is oil on board measuring 20 by 20. It is framed by the artist with a retail value of $800. In Petaluma. So um, was this painted in Petaluma or inspired by Petaluma? This was uh, absolutely inspired by Petaluma and painted on the spot. It is oh. what we call plein air. In plein air, which is French for outdoors. So... Painting in outdoors is very challenging. You have to deal with the temperature, the season, the wind, and the moving shadows and sunlight. So you have to paint quickly. And especially to paint a animal, which, <laughs> a living going, animal. <laughs> which is not gonna pose for you, <laughs> really takes a lot of skill. Absolutely. And you can see the skill in this. And, and a reminder to our viewers, too, that these are California masters. Um, and it's your chance to own a California master. And you can really see the stunning detail in this piece as Maria is talking about. The brush strokes are, to me, what stands out. Oh, absolutely. The brush strokes are very three dimensional, very spontaneous. You, you can tell that she painted it on immediately. And I, I really like the, the colors, the greens that uh, surround, I guess it's a, a cow or a bull. And uh, it's very fresh. It is. And I love how you described the plein air painting done on the site because it has that look of movement. She's trying to capture this, exactly. this cow in this moment before, you know, that scene disappears. Mm -hmm. And you really get that feeling when you look at it. And this is an item that would look great in a home or an office. Um, all you have to do is call the number on your screen and place a bid um, for this California Masters piece. And the framing, too, I think it was um, very unusual. Artist frame, but it's unusual. Can you talk about that, Maria? Yeah, it's a double frame. And so what you have is the actual board itself that she painted on that was probably masked off to, to create these very clean edges and then the board is mounted on a frame so it really has it's very striking and for a small painting it looks a lot larger it's it's really stunning piece um, a reminder to our viewers this is item 5e it's called in petaluma by margarita chaplinska and you really only have a limited time to call so if this is a piece that you're interested in taking home all you have to do is call the number on your screen and place a bid right now uh, the current bid is on your screen maria what other thoughts did you have about well this is oil 
So that's even more challenging to do in person. I do want to say that plein air painting only became popular with the Impressionists. And the reason for that is that's when oil painting, oils were, ab were able to be manufactured in collapsible tin tubes so that the artist could be mobile. Before, the pigments were uh, stored in pig bladders. Wow. <laughs> so the tubes enabled artists to go out and paint on the spot. Well, this is what's so great about having a teacher here. You learn little <laughs> tidbits of history right along uh, with learning about the art. Um, again, item 5E in Petaluma, call and place your bid now. And we're going to go ahead and keep it open, but move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 5F. It's called Gentle Breeze by Carol Hodgson. This is a pastel. It's measuring 18 by 18. It is framed by the artist with a retail value of $650. Now this is a, pas a pastel, but Maria, I, I believe you said there's something a little unusual about it. What can you tell us about it? Yes, uh, most pastels are blended, which means once you put the pastel down, which is by the way, a, it's called dry pastel or chalk pastel as opposed to oil pastel. Um, but she really likes to show the actual strokes and there's no blending. She builds up the layers with her strokes and dots and dashes. So you, you see the immediacy of the painting. Now, in able to do, the, to do this, you need a surface that is textured to capture those particles of the chalk. So she uses an acid-free board that has the texture of sandpaper so that as she puts the pastel on it, it grabs the pigment. Wow, and when you say that, you can really see each brush stroke, our, our camera's panning in right now to like the grassy area, and you can really see almost every single brush stroke that you're referring to. Or it's actually a drawn stroke since it's not painted, but yes. So you really see the immediacy like you did with the plain air painting we just talked about, where the artist is working and every stroke is documented. It's a beautiful choice of color. I love the, the orange and the greens. Well, and, they're and the, the poppies, green. you know. The poppies. Right, they're the California poppies. And she was very impressed with the spot and the breeze was flowing through, so they're moving. They look like they're blowing in the breeze. This is really a quintessential California landscape with our iconic poppy flower. Um, again, it's called uh, Gentle Breeze. As you mentioned, it looks like a, an area where there's a, a breeze passing through. It's item 5F. If you'd like to have this piece in your home, really, it would look wonderful on any wall, maybe your living room or, or it's very warm feeling. Uh, just give us a call uh, at the number on your screen and the current bid is on your screen as well. Um, Maria, what else can you tell us? About? I want to give, uh, I wanted to point out that she's a very accomplished pastel artist and has written a book oh. about how to use pastels and a number of articles for Artist Magazine. So this is really a California Masters yes. uh, piece and one that you can take home by calling the number on your screen right now. And I, I kind of love how the, the, I keep coming back to the warm colors of the frame kind of really match what you're looking at. So mm -hmm. it's a very natural looking scene to me. Yes, and the, even the matte is not a bright white, but it's a creamy white so that it goes with the colors. And it almost looks like there's a little bit of water in the background, too. There's a lot of details when you keep looking right. at it that keep popping It looks up. like a, a river, and uh, you have the clouds that are moving. I mean, everything is moving, which is really nice. Again, um, this is item 5F, Gentle Breeze by Carol Hodgson. Again, it's a pastel measuring 18 by 18 with a retail value of $650. Um, to take this piece home, all you have to do is call the number on your screen. Well, we're nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half an hour. Let's check in over at the recap station for an update while you pick up the phone and get involved. Yeah, the California Masters, an amazing half hour, and now is your chance to bid and win. Let's keep those phones ringing. I am listening to a bidding war right behind me, and it is very exciting. Picasso vase right now, Thomas Sellis, the ceramic measuring 16 by 10 by 10. This beautiful piece right now is above bell ringer status, which is fantastic. It's at $450. We're calling for $500 on this beautiful piece by Thomas Sellis. Thank you for this. All the money that we are raising this weekend goes to PBS KBIE to support our mission. Uh, the next item is 5E in Petaluma. Margaret Rita Chaplinska, 
oil on board measuring 20 by 20. There you see $400 bid right now, and it has a retail value of $800, and we're trying to get this one up to $450 and then $500. Once we have more than one or two people on the phone, we have a live auction going, and it gets really exciting. Um, multiple people are on the lines right now for all this half hour. General Breeze is next. $550 is the high bid right now for this piece retailed at $650. Uh, the retail prices come from the artist because that is the amount that they want PBS KVIE to raise during the auction. Pick up the phone, call the number on your screen. That just went to $600. Fantastic. Can we get $650 while we are live on the air right now and make that one a bell ringer? I think we can in just a moment. Let me recap Waters Meat right now. Is it 950? Wow, that's great. Retail value for that one is $650, well over bell ringer status. Tipper is $500 and it retails for $600. That's almost there. Picasso Vase is at $450, retails for $400. That's a bell ringer. In Petaluma, an $800 retail value, that's at $400. And yes, it happened. Gentle Breeze is now at $650 for a bell ringer in the California Masters category. Isn't that great? Stay with us. There's more art coming up in the next half hour in the PBS KVIE Art Auction. What's wrong with following the proven method? Isn't that the surest way to produce satisfactory results? Today, simply producing satisfactory results isn't good enough. We live in a rapidly changing landscape. Those changes require new solutions. Innovation challenges the idea that old solutions will continue to solve today's problems. PBS KVIE is committed to the visual and performing arts through national productions like Poldark and Victoria to our local productions like KVIE Arts Showcase and the PBS KVIE Gallery, exhibiting award-winning art auction artists and California masters. PBS KVIE's commitment to the arts stays strong because of your participation as a donor and art buyer. Thank you for being a part of the PBS KVIE Art Auction and for making art a part of your home today. Coming up next is the California's Gold category. In tribute to Huel Hauser, California's Gold celebrates the beauty of California's scenery, heritage, and more. View all of the art featured in this year's auction at kvie.org slash art auction. Good evening, I'm Rob Stewart. Thank you for joining us for this California Gold Break. It is so good to be with you, and here's an overview of all the art that's coming up for bid during the next half hour. Check it out, it's a beauty, California's Gold. Item 6A is American River by Patrice. Uh, this is a beautiful oil on canvas measuring 24 by 20. You see her all over Sacramento plain, uh, painting in plein air, and this is framed by R&M Framing. Retail value is $650. This is almost a bell ringer. Item 6B is Across the River by Bruce Levitt. This is acrylic on canvas measuring 24 by 24. Artist framed. Retail value is $500. Item 6C is Dusk on Beach by Jill Erickson. This is oil on canvas. Isn't it gorgeous? Measuring 24 by 18. Artist framed. Retail value is $600. Item 6D is Rosebud Ranch by Vance Vasu. Mixed media. There you see it. Measuring 16 by 20. Artist framed. Retail value is $600. Item 6E is Shining Through by Amanda Cotilago. This is acrylic on canvas, measuring 24 by 36. Look at that. Retail value is $1,500. And item 6F is Autumn Light Sierra Nevada by Marie Therese uh, Koba Shigawa. And this is acrylic on canvas. It is beautiful, measuring 20 by 16, artist framed. Retail value is $600 for Marie Therese Kobishikawa's uh, piece, and that is absolutely beautiful. The phone lines are open right now for bidding, so let's head over to see the art with our auctioneer and our art expert. California's gold Where did category. Michael go? During this break, I am pleased to be joined again by Maria Winkler, sharing her expertise with us today as our art expert. Maria, let's go ahead and get 
I started with item 6A. Item 6A is American River. It's by Patrice. This is an oil on canvas measuring 24 by 20. It's framed by R&M Framing with a retail value of $650. Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about this piece? Well, it started off as a plain air painting, which means painting on the spot. And Patrice loves doing landscapes. And I've followed her work for a number of years. And personally, I think this is one of her best works. It's really neat. It's called American River, and you really do have a sense of place looking at it. It does look very much like our local landmark. And a place of time. I mean, it looks like a sunset, but it could be a sunrise. I love that you mentioned the sunset because there's so many elements of gold here. You have mm -hmm. the gold and the, the gold frame, too. Can you talk a little bit about the colors? Right. Uh, this is actually a floating frame because the canvas is... In the inside and you can see that there's a space between the canvas and the frame so the gold really picks up the warm colors in the and the painting and if you look at the trees you see how the trees in the background are more subdued and smaller so they look further away and then the river of course is coming out at you with these great reflections of the trees and, uh, and the sky there's a really nice depth to this piece. Our cameras are panning in on those small trees that you were mm -hmm. just talking about. So it really does look like you're sitting in the middle of the river right. looking out towards it. Um, mm -hmm. I love that depth. Um, and again, this is American River for our viewers out there who are local to Sacramento. Spend time on this river. This is a piece of, of nature that you could bring home to you. All you have to do is call the number on your screen and place a bid. The current bid right now is on your screen. Um, really a good focal point in any room because of the warm colors. Oh, absolutely. Uh, she loves working in oils, and she, as I said, she in, um, does primarily landscapes. She also owns her own gallery and studio. Oh, it's the Patrice Gallery and Studio. So. Very accomplished artist. Yes. Absolutely. And as you mentioned, the floating frame um, really kind of makes it pop. Even though the colors are similar, mm -hmm. it almost is like a, a, a popping out color to you. Well, the black behind the canvas really uh, outlines it. And it creates a nice contrast between the canvas and the frame. It's such a, I, I love how you mentioned earlier it was a sunset feeling. For me, it's a very calming feeling. Yes. Um, what kind of emotions does this painting bring out for you? Well, it does that for me. I mean, it is calming. It is peaceful. Um, it's lush. Um, you wouldn't know we're in a drought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's plenty of green in here. <laughs> so, um, and, the, and the river is meandering, you know, slowly and peacefully. It's such a beautiful piece, and it's something that um, you can bring home right now by calling the number on your screen and placing a bid. Um, again, this is American River by Patrice, um, with really lovely composition, too, I might add. We have the, the big sky and the river, so there's a lot that really just draws your eye to it. Um, mm -hmm. Maria, can you talk a little bit about the composition? Yes, because the color, um, of course, in the sky comes down into the river and is reflected not only in the river, but in the bank. Um, right here. Oh, that's a good point. They all kind of, the colors all come, kind of come together. They do. Middle. And even the highlights on the trees are warm. So you have a very nice blending and repetition of the colors. It's really a lovely piece, um, and go ahead and call to place your bid. We're going to keep that one open, but we're going to move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 6B. It's called Across the River by Bruce Levitt. This is acrylic on canvas. It's measuring 24 by 24. It is framed by the artist with a retail value of $500. So we, here we have another local riverscape again, Maria, mm -hmm. um, local to the Sacramento area. What can you tell us about it? Well, once again, we have a floating frame, which, by the way, is my favorite kind of frame because it leaves this nice space between the canvas and the frame and it's a very immediate painting it looks very fresh as if the artist was standing right there and painting it as he saw it and there's a lot of movement there's movement in the sky in the trees in the water so you really feel that the water is moving it does. And it really pops out to you, too. I think it's the blues and the blacks really mm -hmm. create a beautiful contrast that pops out to you. And I especially like the reflections of the trees because you know how reflections get distorted in water and they um, have kind of a life of their own. So it's a very nice um, comparison. It almost looks like a Sacramento blue, if you've heard that expression before. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Absolutely. And I love the, the kind of detail in the middle. You almost, as you had been mentioning, you can't quite tell what it is, but it right. draws your eye. It does. I mean, 
I have no, I, I don't know what it is, but you can imagine it can be people camping, it could be all kinds of things. It's a beautiful piece. Um, this is Across the River by Bruce Levitt. Um, the number is on your screen to call and place a bid now. These pieces go quickly, and once they're closed, um, they're gone. So if you want to have this piece in your home, it's a really good size for a living room or a large wall. I love this size. It's a, it's a 24 by 24. It can go anywhere. It could go anywhere in your house, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And really bring a sense of place to your house. Bring some nature um, from the outdoors in. He really loves the waterways in our area, and he loves contemplating the water. So you get a sense that someone is sitting on the opposite bank looking at this. I love that word, contemplating. When I look at that, I get that emotion from it, contemplating. Um, he's a multi-year contributor, which we really appreciate. Thank you so much, Bruce, for contributing year after year. Um, if you want to bring this piece home to your house, all you have to do is call the number on your screen and place a bid right now. Um, do you have any final thoughts, Maria? No, I think it's a really lovely piece, and the colors are vibrant, and the, the trees are just, they look like they're moving in the breeze. I really enjoy this piece. I think it'll be a nice addition to anyone's home. I absolutely think this is going to be a, a statement piece in anybody's home. And just a reminder to our viewers out there, too, that all of the proceeds from this art auction go to support PBS KVIE and the programs that you love. So we're so appreciative to the artists who are donating this original artwork. Again, I, I want to stress this is original work. You can't get this anywhere else. Right. And if you want to have an original painting of our local American rivers in your home, this is the chance to do it. And again, they're not open very long. So if you want to call and place a bid, you have to call the number on your screen. The current bid is on your screen as well. Um, and support PBS KVIE. Support your local programming, which we very much um, appreciate. Such a lovely piece. Um, again, this is item 6B. If you're calling to place a bid, item 6B, Across the River by Bruce Levitt. It's acrylic on canvas, measuring 24 by 24, framed by the artist in that lovely floating frame that Marie mm -hmm. was talking about, which really makes it pop, with a retail value of $500. All right, we're going to keep this piece open and we're going to move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 6C. It's called Dusk on Beach by Jill Erickson. This is oil on canvas measuring 24 by 18. It is framed by the artist with a retail value of $600. Uh, Maria, I love this piece. It kind of has a very peaceful glow to it. What can you tell us about it? Well, Jill loves giving a feeling of glow to her work. She was very moved by this experience she had walking on the beach. And she took a picture and then she went to her studio and did, completed it in a remarkable three days because she, she usually spends a much longer time painting. Wow. And this is oil. So again, it doesn't dry quickly so she can go back and glaze layer after layer. As you can see in the foreground, there are many layers of color. And you see the orange? The way this was painted is she prepared the canvas first with an acrylic wash of orange and then painted the blue tones over it. And orange and blue are complementary colors, which means opposite on the color wheel. So the orange gives a, a vibrance that you wouldn't have without it. It's called Dusk on the Beach, and I think that orange does look like dusk, looks like a sunset again, another right. sunset piece. And you almost feel like you are standing, because of the perspective, you almost feel like you're standing on the beach here looking out at this scene. Can you right. talk a little bit about the, the composition and perspective sure. there? Sure. You notice how the mountains here are very um, subtle and pale because they're further away, and you have the vibrancy of the sunset. And then on the right-hand side, you see some hints of homes and trees. Right. It almost looks like a couple of, like a, maybe a little village on the side of the beach. And then you have a few rocks which occur on the beach, and they're not smack in the middle, but they're off to the side. So it gives you a, a resting place for your eye. So you go from the bottom, you stop at the rock, you stop at the next rock, and then you get to the mountains. And this is a very good way of composing a piece so the eye moves gradually through the image. It really does. There's something to always look at, and the colors, too, are incredibly mm -hmm. stunning. Um, again, this is dusk on the beach, and it's, it could be any California beach, really. Um, so if you're somebody who's spent time at the beach with your family, you want to save those memories in a painting, this is your chance to do it. 
All you have to do is call the number on your screen and place a bid. The current bid is also on your screen right now. Um, and take home dusk on a beach and feel like you're always at the beach, right, Maria? Um, what else? This is another floating frame. Can you tell us a little bit more about yes, that? Yes, it's again a floating frame that has black on the inside so that the canvas has some contrast around it. And what I'm really impressed with with many of these artists is they have these very strong feelings about place and they feel compelled to paint their experience. So it's, it's a very um, emotional uh, feeling that you get in the paintings because they feel strongly about it. I like the word emotional. It kind of brings to me, again, a sense of calm, tranquility, mm -hmm. uh, just being on the beach, relaxing um, at the end of the day. What kind of emotions does it bring out in you? Well, it does. I mean, I love the ocean. I can watch it and listen to it all the time. It changes constantly from peace to more energetic motion. So I think this really captures that peaceful quality. It really does. All right, well, we're halfway through this break, which means that we are gonna keep this piece open and we're gonna check in over at the recap station for bidding updates. This is so exciting. Right now, we have a full on bidding war going on for Dusk on the Beach that Christina and Maria were just talking about. It's at 575, we're calling for 600. Can we get $600 right now and make this one a bell ringer? We got it, $600, yes, that's awesome. So let me recap this first chunk of the half hour. American River, fantastic, Patrice. That is a bell ringer as well, $750. That's great. Uh, retail for $650, but it's at $750 and climbing. By the way, there's a bidding war on all three of these pieces. Across the river, retail for $500, that's at $675. There you see the beautiful piece on your screen or your monitor. $675 is the current bid, and that is a bell ringer, as we just said. And 6C, Dusk on Beach, is $650. Another bell ringer. This is fantastic. These are your California's gold collections. And so these are wonderful pieces to have in your home. Conversation pieces, they celebrate the beauty of California. Let's run through these again. One more time. American River by Patrice. 750 right now is the high bed. Uh, across the river, uh, that's Patrice's piece right there. 750, which is great. Can we get 800? Because I know there's people on the phone for that right now. Uh, there you see Across the River by Bruce Levitt. It is a gorgeous piece of art. It is currently at 675, just went to 700. Let's take that to 725 if we can. Um, and Patrice's piece just jumped up as well. So that is fantastic. Also, let's go to 6C. That is Dusk on Beach, which is a $700 high bid right now. That is fantastic. That is by Jill Erickson. So Patrice, Bruce, and Jill, thank you so much for an exciting 15 minutes. And now let's take a look at some more art for the second half of the break, which is our final break of the evening. That's right, the number to call is on your screen and when you purchase art today, you'll be supporting PBS KVIE as well as the, as well as the arts right here in our region. We're moving on now to item 60, which is Rosebud Ranch by Vance Vassau. Um, this is mixed media measuring 16 by 20. It's framed by the artist with a retail value of $600. Um, this artist is really, a, is this an actual place, Maria? Yes, this is a historic mansion on the Delta. And Vance took a picture of it 20 years ago and then decided to paint it in a studio. And he uses a variety of media. The reason it's called mixed media is it's not only acrylic, but it also has watercolor, markers, pencil, and some areas are rubbed. So when we have different media in one piece, it's called mixed media. Well, you can really tell, and as our cameras are zooming in, you can almost tell the texture on here. It's, it's almost like a raised texture. It's almost like palette knife, where, which is a special knife in which you apply paint. And acrylic can be applied very thickly. You can buy it thick and you can add gel to it. So it looks like an oil painting in terms of its texture.
That's really interesting, the different techniques that he uses in that one. Um, and this is, as you mentioned, a historic place on the Delta. Um, and the Delta, as I understand, is a place that he regularly paints. Mm -hmm. um, do you really get that sense of place in looking at this piece? Oh, yes. I mean, some of these buildings are really very uh, old and interesting. And uh, he was a, a digital uh, illustrator for 10 years. So he has a lot of art background. <clears throat> and I especially like the texture in this piece because it creates a lot of movement. So the sky looks busy and the delta looks busy and your eye just keeps roaming around it, but it always focuses back on the mansion. On the mansion, right. And the delta is an interesting place. It's a really historic place to our Sacramento region. Um, just a reminder to our viewers, if the delta is a place that's special to you, this is your chance to own this piece of original art. All you have to do is call the number on your screen and place a bid. The current bid is on your screen as well um, to take home this original piece of art. Um, again, it's item 6D. It's called Rosebud Ranch um, by Vance Vasu. This is mixed media measuring 16 by 20. Again, Maria gave us that great background on how he's mixing all those different pieces of art um, framed by the artist with this beautiful frame um, with a retail value of $600. And can we talk about the frame for just a minute? Because we do have a couple of different colors that really bring out that the gold mm -hmm. and the black. I really love how they all kind of flow together. Well, there's uh, a little bit of black accents in the, in the building which is repeated in the frame. And of course, the gold inner frame um, picks up all the warm colors in the painting. He's been painting for 50 years. Wow. And you mentioned warm colors, too, um, which I think is a really great description. Can you talk about the different color colors that we're seeing here? Sure. Well, the warm colors are, um, are usually colors that remind you of heat or sun or fire. And those are the yellows and the reds. But you have all the foliage in the delta, which is green and blue, which are called cool colors. So you have a nice balance between the warm and the cool. Um, he, this is typical of his style, but he does work more abstractly. I love it. And, you know, as we're talking about colors, too, you almost see a little bit of clouds or something in the sky, too. It's almost like a hint of, of mm -hmm. what we're seeing there with the, the whites and the greens. Yeah, it's like the sky is reflected in the water. It's a beautiful piece. Again, a reminder to our viewers, viewers that this is item 6D. It's Rosebud Ranch with a retail value of $600. Um, give us a call at the number on your screen and place a bid now. Um, just a reminder, these pieces close very quickly. They'll be gone. So if this is a piece that you're thinking about having to take home, please give us a call to the number on your screen. We're going to keep this piece open for bidding, and we're going to move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 6E, which is called Shining Through by Amanda Catalago. This is acrylic on canvas measuring 24 by 36. It is framed by the artist with a retail value of $1,500. Um, this is a really good size piece. Our, our cameras are backing up a little bit to get the size of it, so you can really see. Um, this is a pretty uh, eye-catching piece, isn't it? Maria? Well, it's a very iconic um, image because it's the Tower Bridge. And shining through, you can see the sunlight coming through the trees right here. There's a little, yep, right there. They're zooming in right there. You can see a, a hint of the sun coming through. Mm -hmm. So you have a really interesting contrast between the metallic quality of the bridge and its painted gold and the organic uh, leaves and trees that are surrounding it. I love the perspective because sometimes you see the Tower Bridge, it's, right. it's straight on. This is an unusual perspective. Do you imagine she was painting this from the banks of the, the river? Well, she probably was observing it from the bank and looking up, and it is an unusual perspective, and it's like it's a hint of the Tower a Bridge. Hint of the bridge. Because you're catching a glimpse of it. It also kind of has a warm, sunny, hot day, as you mentioned, that little uh, sun peeking through. What kind of emotions does this evoke in you? Well, I know that she added a lot of small color, in this case, mostly um, yellows and uh, yellow greens. And it keeps your eye moving around the painting because it acts like little directional arrows. And so you keep going around and then going back to the focal point, which is the Tower Bridge itself. 
Um, again, this is item 6E. It's called Shining Through. And as I read that title, I realize now what we're talking about. The Tower Bridge is shining through the trees and through the sun. Um, it's by Amanda Caldelago. It's acrylic on canvas measuring 24 by 36. Um, this is a local icon. This is our local Tower Bridge. And if this is a place that, if it says Sacramento, <laughs> maybe it's some place for your office or for your home, um, some place to remind you of our local landscape here. All you have to do is call the number on your screen and place a bid. The current bid is also on your screen um, to take this piece home. It's a good size piece um, that would really uh, be a, a uh, focal piece for any wall. Mm -hmm. It is. And of course, it's important that it's such a typical icon of Sacramento. Absolutely. You know, she works full time as a graphic artist. And eventually when she retires, she'd like to paint full time. Well, that certainly makes sense. I love all the trees and the foliage too. As you as you make a, a circle here with all the trees, it reminds mm -hmm. you again of the city of trees, which is Sacramento. Exactly. Very local piece here. We re we really uh, really brings you to Sacramento in a sense of place. Mm -hmm. Do you have any additional thoughts, Maria? Well, I think it's a very happy piece. It's very uh, you feel good when you uh, look at it. It's pleasant. It's it it's uplifting. It absolutely is. Um, we're going to keep this piece open for bidding and we're going to move on to our next piece. Our next piece is item 6F. It's called Autumn Light Sierra Nevada by Marie Therese Kobashigawa. This is acrylic on canvas. It's measuring 20 by 16. It is framed by the artist with a retail value of $600. Um, this is just such a warm, beautiful piece, Maria. Mm -hmm. It just really kind of warms me up when I look at it. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Well, first of all, this is the Carson River in Hope Valley. So it's a very specific place, and she was really captivated by the autumn colors and the light coming through the trees and try to capture that. You can really see the sense of autumn here with the different colors that we're looking at. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the colors and about the, uh, the unusual frame? Well, that's another floating frame, but it's gilded, which means there's gold leaf applied. And that brings, that kind of complements the yellow that's been used in the trees. Uh, and the leaves. What I'm particularly struck by is her handling of the rocks, which is a very difficult subject to paint. And they really look like rocks that are um, water, uh, are wet from the river. And I think she did a really good job with that. And the, so you have the rocks in the river and then you have the trees and there's a bit of a hill. So it has a wonderful sense of, of place. Absolutely. I love that you pointed out those rocks because they are extremely detailed and you do feel like you're standing on this river. As you mentioned, the Carson River, um, this is part of the Sierra Nevada. A reminder that all these, these pieces that we're looking here are part of California's gold. So these really do bring you to a sense of place within California. If you've spent a lot of time in the Sierra Nevada, maybe hiking or camping with your family, what a great reminder to have an original piece of art to remind you of that piece of California. All you have to do to take a piece home like this is call the number on your screen and place a bid. You can also see the current bid on your screen. Uh, Maria, what else can you tell us about this piece? Well, she prepares her ideas with sketches and photographs and then brings in her own feelings as she paints this in the studio. And she had very strong feelings about this. This was very peaceful for her and she really wanted to capture the light coming in through the trees and leaves. You talk about light, and actually that's one of the titles of the piece. It's called mm -hmm. Autumn Light, Sierra Nevada. And you do get that sense of autumn. Um, right now, art auction, we're in the middle of autumn. Um, this is the perfect time to bring home a piece like Autumn Light, Sierra Nevada. Um, again, it's item 6F by Marie Therese Kobashigawa, um, acrylic on canvas measuring 2016 in this beautiful floating frame, which is gilded. And um, it, it's kind of hard to see, but there's little um, interesting detail on the frame that really draws It has a lot well. of texture to it. I do want to add that she has a permanent piece in the Folsom City Hall uh, that's titled Carson River, Sierra Nevada. So Carson River is clearly a place that is mm -hmm. close to her heart. And I really love the color of this, of the Carson River. Um, what a peaceful, I think you used the word peaceful before. That's mm -hmm. really um, an emotion that brings that out I of me. think that art has to be healing. I think you have to feel good when you look at art, and especially if it's in your home. Um, because we, we need some meditative or uh, calming presence. Absolutely. And this piece has a wonderful meditating 
calming presence. Thank you so much for that, Maria. Well, we're nearing the end of this break, which means that now is your final opportunity to bid on the art featured in this half an hour. A big thank you to my guest, Maria Winkler, for spending time with us today as an art expert. Now let's check in at the recap station for an update on auction activity. Thank you, Christina, and I am hearing all kinds of excitement from our phone bank as we are in the final stretch of tonight's portion of the auction. Let's finish off the bidding strong with California's gold category. Let's take a recap of what we have open right now. 6D Rosebud Ranch, that is fantastic. We have a high bid of 550 and climbing. $600 will make this a bell ringer. We are asking for $600 now to bring this up to bell ringer status on Rosebud Ranch by Vance Vasu, a beautiful piece. Uh, mixed media measuring 16 by 20. Let's get that up. Shining through is Amanda Cotalago. This is acrylic on canvas measuring 24 by 36. It is a gorgeous piece of art. Right now we have a high bid of $500. That has a retail value of $1,500. And as you look at your screen or your monitor or your phone, you see how gorgeous that color is. It can be yours if you pick up the phone and call. And then Autumn Light, Sierra Nevada. This is by Marie uh, Mary Therese Kobashigana, Kobashigawa, and that is a beautiful piece. It's acrylic on canvas measuring 20 by 16, again by Mary Therese Kobashigawa. That is at 350 right now. This has a retail value of $600, but all of these pieces are currently open right now on the PBS KVIE art auction. And I'm thrilled to tell you uh, that Mary Teresa's piece just jumped up to 375. So that's great. We're calling for 400 as that one continues to climb. Good job all these artists. Thank you so much. That's all for the first day. Can you believe it? Of the 40th annual PBS KVIE Art Auction. Watch live tomorrow. Good night.